Okay, see, I pressed the button to turn the mic on and it didn't turn on. That's why I always now look at it to see. <laughs> Sheesh. So how are you guys doing? Um, I have had a stressful morning. I don't know about you. It's so early already still, I don't know why. <laughs> so um, I'm really happy to be sitting here and sewing. Um, and this, I know I just sewed this for you guys, but I it just popped into my head and I kind of wanted to like crank out a couple garments this week. Um, I was gonna go out of town on Sunday and I'm not now, but I just thought, you know how it is. It's like right before you go on a trip, you wanna make yourself something. And this just, I don't know, sometimes something pops in your head and you just wanna do it. So I know you guys relate to that. So I'm doing the same jacket, the Howery, but totally different. It's gonna be a completely different animal. Um, I'm gonna do it unlined so that uh, you can see that you can just sew it without a lining. You just have to treat the collar a little differently or not actually differently, but you need to probably line the collar or edge finish the um, piece. And I decided to, at the last second, cut out a um, under collar for mine. So I'm going to bind almost all my seams. Um, and I know a lot of people aren't very comfortable with binding, but I'm here to tell you it's not that hard. Uh, it just takes practice and I've had a lot of practice. That's all it is. I'm not an expert, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not a quilter. I don't, I don't bind the same way quilters do. I bind um, the way I taught myself how to bind. And um, I try and do it the most painless way possible. So <laughs> I hope that you'll give it a try. So um, here we go. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention was that Saturday I'm going to hem my little dress that I made the other day and finish it up and maybe do my buttonholes. And I'm going to sew another pair of ginger jeans, but I'm gonna sew them straight, just straight through, um, speed run style, you know? Like, like there's, uh, you know, gamers do games in a speed run. I know you guys will probably know that, but it's true. <laughs> so I'm gonna do these, and I'm not doing it to show how fast you can sew with gingers. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like speed up or anything. I'm just gonna keep going. You guys have seen me sew those a couple times there, and I've sewn, I think, three pairs of pants on here. So if you want the like step-by-step -step where I'm explaining things, it's there. And so I just thought I would show that once you get the hang of it, you know, you can just kind of sit down and do it once you have your pattern fitting the way you want, right? That's the trick. Because then you can confidently go about sewing it and just worry about the sewing, not the fitting. But when you're worried about both, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, so. So how are you guys doing? Can you guys all, <clears throat> excuse me, see me and hear me well? Um, does the lighting look okay? Tell me what you think. Um, I did bind one edge of my pocket because I wanted to see if my needle was gonna work because all I have is a size 18 needle or 14 needle. Any 14 would be good for this boiled wool. Once I get a few layers, it'll be a little too thick for that. Um, and then I uh, test bound this little piece which Look, this is like the best binding I think I've ever sewn in my life, except that I forgot to um, sew my, sew a little bit right after I threaded my bobbin so I can see like there's thread there that looks okay, but <laughs> you know. So now I'm trying to decide how I would like to put my, finish my pockets. Hi Carol, hi Olivia. Olivia, thanks for ordering things. I saw you ordered a few things. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it when I recognize some of your boys' names. I'm not really that great about recognizing things. So I, I feel terrible when I miss people. I almost missed a good friend the other day in my orders. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for telling me that. Um, okay, so here's my front. So I'm making the shorter version. I actually feel like you know, maybe it could be a little short. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it any shorter. Um, so here's the deal. I could, I could have just hemmed my pocket, but I would have had to finish the edge, right? Um, this, like, this isn't probably gonna fray or anything, but it does feel weird as a sewist to not finish the edges. Um, and I had to get over that when we dealt with vinyl. Like, I did bind vinyl occasionally, but it wasn't necessary, you know? So. I thought, well, maybe I will bind this edge and then turn it and hem it on the inside, you know, so you see a hemline. And then I'm gonna bind around the edge and then I'm gonna top stitch the pocket down. So totally different than the instructions. <laughs> awesome, Olivia. You hate sewing it? You mean you hate cutting it? <laughs> Cause you bought some, so now you have to sew it. <laughs> but you don't have to sew it. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with binding. Um, the other thing I was thinking, like, once I bound this one, I was like, you know, this looks so nice and flat. I just love the way it looks. I might just do this, 
hem it on the outside like that. I'm trying to do less cutesy details in my clothes, in my, hand, my handmaids, but this I like. So what do you think? I think I'm gonna do that. And I don't have to change the thread color because I don't care if there's a blue bobbin on the inside of the pocket. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. Um, I don't think that this pocket has a hem built into it because remember, that's what you meant. <laughs> um, remember, this pocket, what you usually do is you sew around all the size, sides and turn it right side out and then um, you have like this finished all edges and then you top stitch it down. That's how you usually do this pocket. I didn't do that on my other one, just so you know. Um, but I, this looks a little tall proportionally and I'm all about proportions. Like that's the thing I really like about things is my little, my little eye always goes to proportion. So this is what I think looks best. I also rounded it, so that, that's another little thing I did. So I'm going to do this. I, I like the way this looks. And I, I made sure I didn't like it just because I don't have to change the thread color because I got my thread all ready to do. I have orange thread right here, so I'm not trying to uh, <laughs> cop out. <laughs> so like that. I like the way that looks. And then I'm going to bind around the edge. So now I'm going to do this one. So um, I'm going to talk a lot about binding today, and I really strongly encourage anybody to give binding a go. I love it. Um, I just love the way it finishes things. I love the way it looks. I love that it's a pop of color. Um, there's just so much use. It doesn't fray. So I, I have one and three eighths inch bias, and so I'm using the width of my presser foot. It's like a fat quarter of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch, something like that. I'm not going to pull this binding. Usually when I do bias, and you'll see around the edge, I will gently pull it so that it's a little stretched when I put it on. And that's um, so that when it rolls under, it wants to do that. I'm not going to do that on the top of this pocket because I don't want to draw my pocket top in like that. And bias will do that. So the other thing I should note is that this boiled wool is dry clean only. Um, I probably would not have bought it had I realized that. I was thinking boiled wool means it's already, like I can wash and dry it. I, if I wouldn't have had this idea for this garment, <clears throat> I probably would have test washed and dried a piece of it to see could I, could I just wash and dry it anyway. Because I do, I do break the rules like that, you know. Alright, I got a little bit off right there, so I'm actually going to fix that because that, I don't know if you can see it. That will bug me. I'm going to try and take it out, not near one of these dots so that I don't have a back tack there, you know, because uh, I can hide it kind of in the navy blue stitching. I, I thought, oh, maybe I'll just do this, but I got off right there too. And I really like the um, orange dots showing better, so I'm going to do, do it this way. So, so yeah, and when I go around the perimeter, I will gently pull it because it's a, it, this edge right here, this cut edge here, is a different length than where the, the binding is going to finish on the inside. Because when it gets down to the curve, it's going to be a little shorter of a length. So I do want it to be a little bit pulled and stretched so that it's really easy to turn under that edge. I try and set myself up for success, you know, especially with bias. But, you know, this is, you know, really kind of hard to see my little boo-boos because it's so dark. I cannot grab my thread there. I don't want to pull the um, fabric. I don't want to snag it because it's a print. If you snag your fabric, sometimes it will leave like a white streak through the fabric. And um, that I will end up taking off completely if that happens. Okay, so there we go. I just took that out. And now I'm going to kind of pull it over there when I sew it this time to make sure because it, it has that memory, that sewing memory. It wants to go back to where I did it the first time. Just gonna, I'm going to hold it over. So here's my line right there that I'm trying to cover. I'm going to hold it just past it. It is really trying to push it over there. And partly it's because the wool's kind of thick, you know. It wants to push it out. All right, so let me hem this. We'll finish the pocket. I'm going to check my height here. I'm sure what I'll do is this. I want my pockets to be symmetrical, so I'm just comparing them like this. 
Anything to make it easier, you know? I had to uh, release some of the pressure of my presser foot as well because of the thickness of this. Now, I sew really thick stuff on the regular, probably not in the future anymore, but um, this is different. When it's already a little thick to begin with, it's just going to build up. And so I could feel that my, it was kind of, it was like it was sew sewing through molasses a little bit. And that's why I released some of the pressure of my presser foot right here. So I just unscrewed this a little bit. And that's all I have to do on my machine. On some home machines, they put it in a really weird place. But I highly recommend fiddling with that anytime you feel like, oh, my machine feels like it's dragging. Or um, say you're using a, fra a fragile fabric or one that the print is scraping off of because of the feed dogs. Try releasing some of the pressure. Or, you know, if you have a fabric like that, then uh, probably put that side up, not towards the, the feed dogs. I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys, but it's definitely happened to me. Especially on the spoon flower stuff where all the ink is sitting on the surface. Because this hasn't been impregnated. Like this is the way this is printed is a completely different. I don't know about printing processes. So if anyone knows anything, tell me. But that's why um, the spoon flower does that. All right. So I'm going to start from the back of the pocket and go forward. I'm going to wrap this around the top like this. So that my, my edge is nice and finished up there. I'm going to kind of, I'm pulling on it a little bit because I really want it to be snug up there. It's just going to loosen up. That's how I know it. So I'm going to gently pull my bias like this. I, I don't recommend using pins. I'm lifting up my presser foot a lot to release the pressure because I don't want the um, corner to get stretched out. You know what I mean? I don't recommend using pins because you might want the maneuverability of the bias. And you see how my bias is already standing up? That's a, that's a good sign. That means it's a little shorter. All right, I'm gonna cut it about an inch past. I'm gonna pull it a little bit. I'm gonna wrap it around and then, there we go. I'm going to look at that edge right here and I'm going to trim it to make sure that it's at least smaller than the width of my bias. Because uh, my bias has to cover that. It becomes more logical the more you do it. All right. I just, I just hacked that to pieces, didn't I? <laughs> it's okay. We're going to cover it up. Even, you want a nice even trim, um, and then fold that over, just like this. So see, now I have my little pocket. Now there was a, there's a few ways we could have done this. We could have bias trimmed it so that the bias all sat on the top, right? Like, like this, right? We could have done that. We can, but the way I'm doing it is I'm doing it on the edge like this. <clears throat> and then um, we could have had it if it was just on one side. It could have been on the back side or on the top. So there's lots of ways to use the bias. Just experiment. You kind of get the hang of like what you like and what you don't like. They're all about the same to sew. This one probably is the the so-called trickiest, but I actually feel like they're all about the same. So I'm going to try and get my corner right up here to be nice and square. Did you see it was trying not to? What I have learned, like when I do this, is that um, I used to pull tighter and tighter and it would make it more and more messy looking. And so sometimes you got to do counter to what you think needs to happen. Pulling tighter is my MO. I pull everything kind of tight, you know? I don't knit tight amazingly. I did when I first started, but when I'm sewing, I tend to like pull my pieces together um, and I find like I did all that work on the pattern and make it like fit perfectly and then I just foil myself with the sewing machine. That That's my MO. I'm always pulling on things. So when I got to this, I finally was like, okay, you have to try something that's not intuitive, and that was to relax it. So I just kind of relaxed my corner there rather than like 
pulling this really tight and pulling this down really t hard because then when I go to do this, I get this weird little angle, right? I don't want that. This is going to get a little tired of me fussing with it. So if I do this kind of relaxed, I fold it down once and then I fold it in. It's going to fold more natural. Oh, it didn't do it that time. It did it the first time. It's going to fold more along the line right here. I'm still not getting it. It's a little thick. Maybe that's my problem right now. So let's see here. I'm going to see. Maybe if I pull it a little over this way. Eh. I'm going to pull it out this way. This doesn't seem like that's what I want to do. I may just have to deal with that. I got it right one time. All right, so let's let's pull this down a little bit. I don't want this edge right here to get too ratty because then it'll peek out. See, what the thing is, I want the binding to fold right here. It doesn't want to fold right there. No, you didn't miss anything, Thea. I'm just making, um, I'm binding some pockets and I'm nerding out on it right now. So I think what I need to do is fold this further away from the edge. I need to make this right here wider, okay? That worked, okay, that's the trick. Sometimes that's what it takes, trying it a few different ways. <laughs> All right, so um, I do that little style because I like how clean it makes the top. And I'll, I'll show you why I don't do that on the next one. So this is not going to show on both sides, right? Only we're going to see this on the top. So that releases all the um, headache and worry of my binding being perfectly sewn on the binding on both sides. I'm just going to make it look good on the top. That's all I'm going to do. That's all we're going to see. When I get to that little spot where the bias is folded down, I'm going to kind of I'm going to make sure that's covered up. I don't want that peeking out. That would drive me crazy. So I'm folding it and I'm just holding it just past that first stitch line because that's what I want to cover. And so see, when I pulled the bias as I was attaching it, it naturally wants to curl to the top side. All of this is so stretchy. The bo boiled wool has a little bit of stretch. The um, bias has a lot of stretch and this curve has some stretch. I'm just using an awl. I use a tapered tailor's awl, not the, um, I don't know what the other one's called. They make, they make at least two. I use the one that's not as sharp. I don't, the, the sharp one just pushes right through the fabric and I can't really get a purchase on it. You're avoiding finding like the plague girl, no. Just do it on some scraps. It's really fun. I love it. It's just one of those things. It's so satisfying and it finishes the edges and you can have so much fun with it. You might start seeing a, a lot of it late, uh, soon because I've been missing doing it lately. Hope you guys are up for it. <laughs> you're going to get so sick of hearing me describe how I do it. Then you're going to, then you're all going to want to try it. All right, so when I get to this point, I'm trying not to push this this way. I want it to stay straight onto the pocket. And I'll, the reason why is I don't want extra when I get up to the top. And I don't want to stretch out this leg of the pocket. So I'm already kind of looking at this right here and making sure I'm going straight onto the pocket. I just know that from experience right there. So now I'm here. I'm going to do my little fold thing. I learned on this one that I need to fold my first one kind of far from the edge there. Fold it again. And fold it over. So I, I learned something today. That's great. That one doesn't look as good, but I'm also going to top stitch this edge down onto the jacket. So here's my first little pocket. I have some little puckers, so I'm hoping that I can kind of make those relax a little bit when I put it on the jacket. I think that looks pretty cute. Does it look over constructed to you guys? Like maybe I should have just done this. What do you think? It'll be like this. Like that. What do you guys think? Maybe I should have done the bias on just the top. What if it was like, I, I thought about doing this, but I didn't like the idea of it. 
funny enough. Now I'm like, hmm, maybe that was the idea. Maybe I should have done this. It, this just looked really kiddie-ish, like kids, you know? Like finding all the whole perimeter like this looked more juvenile to me. I used to work in kids wear. This way, you like that, Carol? I like that too. I like that it, it does look a little bit kind of um, architectural, you know? All right, we're gonna stick with that then. That was the right answer. <laughs> now if four more people are like, no, I like it the other way, I'm gonna be like, no, Carol's right. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start. Now the reason I don't, well here, I'll, uh, I sh I'll show you when I got this on. I'll show you why I fold my little thing in that weird little way. That took me figure out forever how to figure out how to do. All right, so I'm gently pulling this. I'm not pulling the pocket, just the top. And uh, I lift up my presser foot a lot as I go around the corner, mainly because this fabric has stretch, it's on the curve, and the wool is a little thicker than just regular old, you know, wovens. Wool, this boiled wool is not a knit, I don't think. Doesn't say. Yeah, not the whole border. Cool. You like more edge? All right. <laughs> All right. So let me trim my little edge here, especially where these thicknesses are. <clears throat> okay. All right, so the reason I do that little folding trick is if I were to just fold this straight one, two, can you see that I'm getting this little edge right here poking out? Can you see that? Is that bright enough? I'm going to brighten this up for you guys a little bit. <clears throat> Is that okay? So see, if I just fold this straight like this, this first little corner right here, it'll poke out. That's why I don't do that. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I just got sick of that on my other stuff. All right, so I learned that um, I need to fold the first one, make this kind of wider than usual, this little distance between here and here, and then it wants to wrap around the edge a little bit more crisper. <laughs> okay, good, Darcy. I kind of thought that's what you meant. Yeah, it's a, it's funny what you can picture in your head, and then when you go to do it, you're like, huh, that's not what I thought it was going to look like. All right, so this little edge down here, I'm poking that inside. My awl is so handy for that. You can try using pins, but um, the pins also, they're so thin, they go right into the fabric. And then um, they don't grab it. Like this is like, it gets fat enough, fast enough that you can grab the fabric without it poking through and losing your purchase on it. I'm trying to remember what the other one's called. Um, a stiletto. Isn't the other kind? That's not what Clover calls it. They don't call it a stiletto, but mine is the tapered tailor's all. I actually have one in a package somewhere here. I always pull it out to show you guys what it looks like. <laughs> My office is in such a state of flux right now. Oh, here we go. That's what I get. Yours will be nice and white when you buy it. Mine's yellowed. <laughs> this so I know it looks it looks vintage doesn't it it's not <laughs> I've had this thing for I feel like I've had this thing for probably 16 years at least <laughs> I had one before that in college um, and they, the school issued me one and it was a blue handle and more bulbous on the bottom, the, at the base there. And it was like this. And I love that thing. And it just disappeared one day. I've never seen it. Um, and, um, I used it then too, but not for binding. And then I bought this as a replacement and I just lucked out that I got the right kind, but it was the same kind of 
tip. All right, so I'm going to fold it far away, fold it over, fold it over, hold it. No need for pins. I've got my awl and my presser foot to help me out. All right, there we go. All right, so I have my pockets marked. So when I mark my pockets, I always poke into where the hole is. Into where the hole is. On the pattern, but I knew where this was. The ballpoint in, no. No, you. it's still pretty sharp. <laughs> it's just not the stiletto style. Okay, so uh, when the pattern piece is there, I poke my pin in straight in, I and then I um, use the back and I poke where that pin was in. It doesn't look like it's straight now, but it's because it's just moved around a little bit. And then, um, and then before I, I just do this, poke it all the way through before I get to the sewing part of it so that it doesn't fall off. And then I get here and I pull them apart and now I have my pins right where I want them. Just like that, and now I'm gonna Secure all of them by just poking them all the way through like this, finishing it. All right. That way I know I get it on the right and the left, you know. Uh, there were four marks, I'm pretty sure. I only need the top two. I mean, you know, I, I only because, I'm not saying that because I think I'm like the pocket placement queen. It's, um, I only need these two because it's a square pocket and the other holes were over here, okay? <laughs> All right, so what I do is, um, well, first I trim this thread because I don't want to immortalize it. All right, so I'm going to look at my pocket. I'm going to center it this way. And usually I look at it like um, that this pin is supposed to be like right here. I'm not sure. I didn't lay the pocket pattern on there, but if I were draw if I were drafting this pattern, that's what it would be. This little hole would be like a quarter inch and a quarter inch down and over, right? Um, so I just kind of look at how far apart they are. Let's see, you can see this is my pocket, thing, right? And then usually I would go up a little bit over that, and I basically just kind of look at how it looks on the uh, garment. And now I'm gonna just pin it in the middle. I do two pins because I don't want it to rotate. If you put one pin in the middle, it's going to go. <laughs> I told you it's not, I wasn't bragging. <laughs> I only need two because the other two would have been useless. I only needed these two. This is what I should have said. Oh my gosh, Michelle. You are perfect. You are going to be perfect for my Twitch stream. <laughs> okay. So uh, same thing. I always know that it's where the pin went into the fabric. That's where the marking is. And I'm going to kind of look at them side by side like that. Make sure. Probably doesn't look straight on your on the camera to you guys. The camera's at a little bit of an angle. All right, here we go. So I'm just making sure that this is nice and smooth in between, like that's where I want it to be, like that. I'm gonna put a couple extras since there's a little bit of wibbly wobbly going on there um, so that I know I get my non-negotiable bits in here. Like that. I just pin away from the edge so that I don't actually have to spend time removing Pins. What is that? Look at that pink thread in there. This fabric is so interesting. <laughs> I knew you were, T. Michelle. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. I'm gonna start. Um, am I gonna start? Yeah, I'm gonna just stitch on this right here. I'm not gonna do my little triangle thing. I'm just gonna start down here and then go across and down. I'm just gonna leave this empty right there because I like the way that looks. Normally what I would do is I would start right here. I would start right here, or maybe like right here, go up go over to this edge, across the top, and then down, like a little triangle. But this is a different pocket edge, right? It's got the bias on it. So I'm just gonna make it look like 
it's st stitched on this edge here, but I'm still gonna reinforce this opening by stitching across down here and across the top. I'm gonna start at the bottom of the hem there. About the bottom of the orange part, not the bottom of the hem. And I just do this because, you know, when you put stuff in your pockets, that just is a stress point at the top there. And if you look at your ready to wear stuff, a lot of them have something like that. I'm not like following any guidelines. I've just done this over the years because I want it to last. And I'm really, really hard on my clothes. I really am. You would think because I hand make things that I would be a lot nicer to my clothes, but I, I really am not. So I'm getting a little puckering here. And um, that's because of the bias edge is a little bit drawn in. I could probably fix that, but if I were to stretch this edge out to get rid of that, it would make it so that when it, once it was stitched on the garment, the garment would do whoop, a little tiny bit. Honestly, I don't mind this that much. I could have prevented it, done a better job at sewing my binding, maybe not pulled it as much as I was attaching it, but I actually don't mind having a little bit of 3D quality on my pocket. It doesn't, it doesn't bug me. It might bug you on a different fabric application. All right, so across the top, and then I'm just stitching right where that first stitching is, like that. Yeah, I kind of think that looks cute, the little bit of, but it wouldn't stand if uh, I was, you know, getting this judge somewhere. See that? And see, now my top is really secure Cause you know, like if it were just stitched right here, it would feel a little flimsy, you know what I mean? All right, let's do our other one. And then we're gonna start putting this together. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. I was like, why, why do I wanna start over here and go that way? <laughs> that felt weird. Glad I didn't start. It felt like it was pulling. That's why I just pulled up my garment. Can you guys hear how thick it is? It's pretty thick. I'm hoping that I don't have trouble with the seams. My bias is not that wide. I may have to do some grading of the seams. I like to try not to stop when I go around curves so that I, I don't get a little like, you know, point in my stitching if I adjust, you know what I mean? That happens to me, bugs me. This looks like a, a little wingy, like it's winging out a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try and check that as I get up here. The binding is a little thin right there and thick right here. It doesn't look straight to me. I'm hoping it's just an optical illusion. Yeah, that's an optical illusion. Okay, that made me a little nervous. All right, so let's uh, trim this little thread. Did I trim my thread on that one? All right, get rid of the pins. Cool, that's cute. Nice, Judith. That sounds nice. Are you a teacher or a student? That why you're on spring break? Ours is next week, and I actually am taking some days off at the beginning of the week. We'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I have a lot of packages to ship, and they're taking me like 15 to 20 minutes per package. So um, I'm a little like, I'd rather get that done and not have that sitting there over my head. All right, so I'm going to do my shoulders. Not my collar. Here's my shoulder seams. I've got this fold. I probably should have gotten rid of that before I started. I couldn't pre-wash my fabric, you know, because it's boiled wool. So let's see, here's my right front and here is my left front. I'm just gonna look at my fabric here. Remember that time I sewed the uh, shoulder, the, the side seam to the yoke? <laughs> 
Fun times. All right, here we go. I, I feel like this does, this probably has a right and a wrong side. Your teacher, congratulations for having a spring break. <laughs> All the kids right now are cramming to get caught up for the semester and probably emailing you, aren't they? <laughs> and you're like, I'm on break. <laughs> this probably does have a right and a wrong side or at least a different from between one side and the other. I'm liking this side. You guys probably can't even tell the difference. Um, I'm doing it this way though. So let's see. Now the proper way to do this <laughs> would be to sew the seam allowance first, grade the seam, meaning trim it, and then attach my binding. So um, my thing is that I would like to see, you know, I'm concerned that um, if I don't change my thread color, I might, I might be, might see my navy blue thread. Hi Kathleen, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> That's what they're doing, right Judith? I know, cause I'm one of those parents right now who has a panicking teenager. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I mean, hit you guys. All right, I'm going to um, sew my back neck seam right now because this seam won't show very much, and I I just want to see if my navy blue thread's going to show on the seam. That's all. I don't have scrap fabric. I should have some here, and I forgot. So that seems pretty good. If I pull really hard, but I'm not gonna be pulling hard. If I pull gently, like a shoulder seam would be, it still is not showing. I'm gonna think that that's fine, um, but I am still gonna sew the seam first, then I'm gonna trim it down for the binding. I'm gonna do the binding afterward. I cut this fabric so close. I have so much of this fabric, but the way I put it on the, uh, when I cut it out, was so that I could have extra. I, goodness knows what I would do with a yard of this stuff. Except make another one of these. <laughs> but um, I just saw like some of the selvage there, which I'm not a big fan of sewing the um, selvage. Like cutting, using, keeping the selvage on the fabric when I cut it out. The selvage does weird stuff. It really pulls the fabric. This I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't think it's kind of the same way, but it still makes me kind of wary. You know, so I'm doing both shoulder seams. I almost want to release the pressure of my presser foot a little bit more, but it's sewing pretty good. I can just feel it. It's one of those things. All right, now I'm going to trim these. The other reason I'm not going to sweat my thread color is that there is a chance that one of my binding seams may end up being the seam of the shirt. Like if I go a little bit past this, I did not need to sew the seam first. I'm just doing it to make sure, you know, if you weren't watching me, would I maybe have trimmed this and then put the binding on as my first seam? Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> There's no rule. We're not sewing couture here. So let's see, um, trying to think about this. So if this is my garment, I want my shoulder seam technically to press towards the back, which means um, my binding should probably finish on the front panel. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Um, because when I sew my binding on, I can actually run this through my binding machine but I won't. <laughs> it's too thick, probably. Oh, I got a little hacky and slashy there, didn't I? So when I put my binding on from the back and then I go to the front, it puts the little fold edge on this side. And that fold edge might be just past this seam right here. 
that's why I know that it would be better if um, I finish it on the front because I'd rather the seam get pushed towards the back if it's gonna get pushed one way or the other. And that's gonna encourage that. If I had done it the other way, it would encourage the seam to be pressed towards the front. I know this after years of sewing bias. So um, I, I kind of wish I was sewing this on the other side too so that I could see my seam. I'm just gonna check it as I do it. I'm not gonna pull it. It'll, it would make it easier to finish the edge, but it would also um, make my shoulder seam draw up a little bit, and I don't want that to happen. So so if you're just joining us, we are sewing the Howry jacket again, but an unlined version. So see, look at that. I've gotten a little wiggly there, or maybe, maybe I just got it a little straighter this time, or maybe it's a little bit of both. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and I decided that even though this fabric doesn't fray, and if you had a serger, you wouldn't need to bind your seams at all, but I thought it would be fun. I miss sewing binding and it'll look really nice, you know, when it's hanging up. So that's partly why. And at least now I know it's, uh, my binding is wide enough to do this. So I was a little concerned about the thickness. So see my fold, no one's going to look at this, but I'm still going to try and get it right on. Um, I'm going to try not to sew past that seam since it is a seam this time, not like the edge of a quilt, right? The edge of a quilt, it's not going to be pulling apart there. I'm going to try and stay on the seam allowance. But if you were sewing a quilt right now and you really wanted to make sure that the bias landed on the by the, the stitch landed on the bias on the top and on the bottom, you know, on here and on here, you want to make sure that you stitch to the right of your first seam there. That's how you do it. That's the only trick. So fold this right here, just past that seam, just cover it, and then stitch to the right of the seam. That is, that. is There's no trick, that's all it is. And it's just getting good at trimming your um, edge and folding it under. And I, I've had years to do this, not on quilts, but on other things. There's so a uh, few seams in this garment. That's another good reason that's good for practicing binding. Not that you're, you know, you want to get good at binding for some re weird reason, but I like it. So that's my seam. A little thick, huh? But I kind of think it gives a nice structure. It's much stiffer. See that? It's kind of stiff. But I'm okay with that. I like it. I like the way it looks. All right, let's do my other one. This is the front, so I'm going to start on my back. How about this time? I will sew it. I don't ever sew bias like this, so <laughs> let's see if I can do it. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. Okay. <laughs> But hey, I can see my, my first seam, which is great. It's not that hard. I'm just trying to keep it all relaxed here. That's trimmed pretty good. Let's see this side. That looks good. All right, bind it. Pre-trimming pre is kind of nice. It feels uh, like, it makes it feel like I sewed it really accurately. <laughs> you know? Because I pre-trimmed that after I sewed the seam. So next, um, after the shoulder seams, we put our sleeve on. It's a kimono style sleeve. So uh, it doesn't have a true um, curved armhole, like an arm's eye. It has an armhole, obviously, but it doesn't have an arm's eye, like a nice curved one. Hence why I'm not a big fan of kimonos, like at all. I hope I get some use out of this, but I just love the idea of this. 
All right, so there's my two shoulder seams. I'm gonna blend this a little bit better. Can you see that little whoop de doo there? I'm gonna blend that. That's my armhole seam anyway. Isn't it or my armhole? It might be my next, yeah, it's my armhole seam. It's gonna be blended anyway, no matter what. I'm not gonna like stitch around that. So this is gonna get pushed to the back. And you see that? That's probably because maybe I didn't cut it very accurately or it got stretched a tiny bit because remember the way um, your sewing machine works is the feed dogs are doing this and your presser foot's doing this. So they're pushing and pulling against each other. So sometimes you get these little inaccuracies. Or it's my stellar cutting. <laughs> because it's on both sides, it's probably my cutting. Because I did sew them each individually differently. So um, if I had sewn them identically, I would have thought it was a sewing issue. If I had, if I had um, since I sewed them uh, identi uh, differently from each other, it's probably a cutting issue. All right, let's put my sleeves on. Let's see, did I mark my center of my sleeve? I did. Good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna press my seam towards the back like this. I'm gonna sew my seam, show my uh, sleeve. I'm just checking out the, I can kind of tell the difference with the fabric now, yay. There's no easing with this uh, sleeve. Seems like it right now, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm pressing. What I'm fiddling with is the seam, the shoulder. I really want to encourage it to go to the back. I like the way that looks better. Um, I don't do a whole lot of proper around here, like, but I do adhere to some kind of kinds of things that I was taught um, and pushing the shoulder seams to the back is one of them. I like the way the garment looks better. It really bugs me when ready to wear garments have the shoulder seam on the back, <laughs> you know, cause it should be, it should be right about here. Like this one's on the back, <laughs> you know, this isn't ready to wear, but you know, it's just one of those things. This is more of like kimono style and that's why kimono styles do that. And I feel like the garment hangs a little nicer when the shoulder seams push to the back. It's just a, it's just a weird little quirk of finishing. I, and you know, I worked a few places and that's where they did, that's what they did as well, sewing wise. <clears throat> and if you, as a pattern drafter, were to shape the seam allowance, you would shape it so that it pressed towards the back because they would never press the seam open. So if you're pressing the seam, op seam open, that's different. All right, I'm gonna trim this. So are you guys sewing? What are you guys up to? Tell me. I'm kind of in my own little world here. Sorry. Okay, so you see that little whoop de doo right there? I'm going to fix that. That's because as I got to the thickness, my machine started to guide me away from the um, shoulder. And I got a little curve. I'll show you better in just a second. You see that right there? I want it to be straighter. See that? That's how you get little bubbles in your garments. <laughs> that looks a little better. <clears throat> the binding's gonna cover that up. I'm gonna take a drink of water, sorry guys. My throat's tired. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna trim this a little bit closer than the other spots because of the thickness of the shoulder. It's gonna it's gonna balance itself out once I bind it. All right, let's do my other shoulder. Actually, I'm gonna do I'm gonna bind this one right now because um, <clears throat> I'm right here and it's a big garment. You're making a skirt block, Carol. Wow. You're still working on the, um, you're the one that was working on that. I remember that. That's, how's it going? Have you sewn prototypes yet? Or are you still working on your pattern pieces? 
All right, so I want my seam allowance to press towards the sleeve. So that means I want it, I want to start on the sleeve side and go towards the shoulder. I have to like work some of this out vocally. Oh, nice, Olivia. I love listening to things. But you know, if I say something exciting like, oh my gosh, look at that unicorn, I'm gonna probably distract you from work because then you're gonna have to look. All right. This is a little easier to tell if I'm not sewing straight because the bias is pretty darn straight. I'm gonna leave a little extra hanging off like this. We don't need to finish it like we do the pocket. Oh, you start with your whack at it now? Cool. That's cool. That'll be so exciting when you have your own skirt block. That's cool. All right. Now say this was really thick and you could only bind to there. That's fine. I mean, unless you're, you really want it to look clean because you think people are gonna see the inside. Remember, this fabric is not going to fray. I didn't back tack there. I don't need to because it's going to go on a seam. Um, and just in case I ever want to take something out, it is kind of nice to not back tack occasionally. I feel like um, I am very comfortable with people like... I just don't think of people looking at the inside of my garment and going, oh, you didn't do a very good job. I know they do, especially now that I started this live stream. <laughs> I know people probably do evaluate things I wear when I see people in person, but I don't see a whole lot of people that know that in real life know that this is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, Carol, see you later. <laughs> and um, I'm always trying to stress that to people like, you know, you just got to, when someone says, oh, I like your whatever, you just say, thanks. <laughs> you don't say what's wrong with it. You don't start going, oh, I could have, I sewed it and I could have done this, this, or this. You know, people don't say that when you compliment your friends who bought their dress, they don't say anything about it, right? They don't say, oh, yeah, but I could have worn it with these other shoes or I don't know if this color really suits me, you know. They don't really say that kind of stuff, you know? So I feel like I'm pretty comfortable by now with just stopping with thanks. Um, and if someone says, oh, hey, did you make that? I say, yeah, I did, thanks. You know, or yeah, I did. Um, they're not going to screw, if they're scrutinizing it, that's their problem. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, I made it. I'm, I'm fine with that. And I, did, I haven't made 15 of them to get really good at sewing it. So yeah, it's not gonna look like a factory made it, but I'm kind of, glad with that too <laughs> so I and, and and to be perfectly clear when I see people who've sewn something I don't look at it and go you could have done that better at all like I don't think that way at all I'm not judgmental about other people's sewing probably people probably think I am but I know how hard it is I don't see any point in that and I don't tear other people down for the sewing they're doing you know like heck they did it, <laughs> you know? All right, so I want this to go towards the sleeve and it is gonna work that way because I finished on the body. I'm gonna trim this, the shape of the sleeve like that so that it gets caught in the um, underarm seam, you know? Same here. I'm gonna kind of help this transition a little bit. And I'm pressing the seam towards and doing it so, because if I had done it this way and um, the seam was still there, like this binding seam, whoo, my machine automatically lets the pressure foot down. Um, if I had shaped it this way, I would have this little like point sticking up. So it would have gotten shaved off anyway. I'm just helping myself later. All right, so let's see here. We're doing the other shoulder, the other sleeve. And then we have the side seams, and then we have the collar, and then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do about the hem. What am I gonna do about the hem? I have to think about that. Hmm. I'm noodling on it right now. Because I could 
I could sew it with the binding around the edge, but that seems a little, a little too much. Um, I could uh, hem it, you know, just hem it. But I have to finish the edge to be able to do that. So maybe I do the edge, do the hem like the pocket. Um, <clears throat> one of the options I have is um, my serger does a, what do most people call it? I call it a marrow edge. Does that sound familiar to you guys? A marrow edge, M-E-R-R-O-W. Oh, I know, people call it rolled hem edge. It's not a rolled hem, but they call it that. I don't, I don't know why they call it that. Um, Cause it doesn't, it's like a rolled hem is when you roll the fabric twice. It's not serging it like that at all. It's just putting a uh, edge of serging on it that's very dense. And sometimes you can set it up to where um, you can change the differential on the machine to do it and it stretches it out a little bit and then you get this ruffling effect like you see on kids clothes. So it's also called lettuce edge, like lettuce you eat. Um, but I can take the differential off when I do it and it just be an overcast edge. I thought about doing that on my collar edge and on my um, hem, but it's a little, I, I actually like the way it looks when you have a machine that does a kind of an interesting surging stitch or a decorative one, but I don't have, mine's not that fancy. Um, I feel like it looks unfinished, but there was this big trend of people doing that for a really long time. All right. What was my little hiccup the last time I did this? Was it just that shoulder seam being not too straight? Because I feel like I, I did pretty good this time. That's what I had to, do, had to deal with, right? So I'm going to trim this. I'm going to bind it. Do an underarm seam. If you didn't bind the edges and you did an unlined howry, you can um, serge the uh, edges, zigzag them. And you'd be already done. You'd be way past me right now. <laughs> Just let's put it that way. Okay, so I want my seam to be pushed towards the sleeve. So that means I want to start on the sleeve and end on the garment. So I have to say these things out loud. I have to figure it out. I, I just don't know off the top of my head. If I did that kind of sewing, like that kind of step over and over again, I would know what side to start on every time, but I just don't. And you know, I had an old friend who used to say, I don't want to store all that in the hard drive, like meaning his brain. And I kind of feel the same way. Like I don't really want to have to remember everything. I'm not being tested on it. I'm not employed by anybody where I need to remember certain things. I just remember the things that I want to remember and then I figure it out later. If I just know how to figure it out, that's more important, right? It's kind of like if I know how to do the math problem, then I can do whatever problem I need later on. And sometimes I have little cheat sheets that I just write down and set next to me. And so then that way I don't have to remember things, especially in knitting. I don't know if any of you are knitters, but I have a few things written down. I have quite a few things written down. <laughs> I don't want to remember that stuff. I just go to my cheat sheet. Okay, I trimmed. I need, I'm needing to trim this way too much. I feel like this seam is going to be, uh, this sleeve is going to be a hair shorter now, and my shoulder is going to be a hair shorter. I don't remember trimming the other side again, did I? All right. Do my hem here, or my binding hem here. Yeah, so the reason I added the under collar, the other fabric, was because I didn't want to have the edge of my collar be raw or need a binding edge or a serge edge or anything. Um, so that's why I decided to do the under collar. Right, Olivia? I know, it really is. Like, why try and remember that stuff? And sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll never forget this. And I totally forget it. Okay, that's the that's the back. Okay, perfect, perfect. Just because I stitched it right the first time doesn't mean I stitched it right the first time. <laughs> it just means that the machine didn't push it the other way. You know, the shoulder seam. That's a pet peeve of mine. All right. I'm trying to just make this stop pulling on me. Looks 
Nice. Yeah, so now see when I, it just naturally pushes this way because the fold edge is on this side going just past that seam. And plus, um, pushing against the shoulder is just a losing battle. I do, hi Ida. I do see people, um, their garments, uh, they will finish the sleeve and then push it this way and top stitch it down. And I honestly, I've seen enough sewers to know that sometimes they do that because it didn't go so well putting in the sleeve and they're having trouble making it look good or they just um, not sure what to do with the seam allowance but just push it towards the sleeve it really will like kind of break in like you know like Ellen Mason from Audacier says okay it's not done until you wash your garment you know thanks Judith you know so it's true it's like your garment needs to get used to being in that shape all right so here's the uh, inside so far But, you know, when I'm wearing it, you're not going to see any of this. You're not even going to see it on the, the hanger. All right, so I'm going to do the underarm seam now. I was just looking at it. I just like to look at it. Um, I could, I think I, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to hem my, hem my garment because that's kind of how I'll hem my sleeves. I was thinking I would just hem the edge or hem it like this. You know? Is that too cutesy? All right, let me put the underarm seam in. I, You know, it would just be easier. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't like that. Okay, so let me uh, trim this too. So I'm pushing it towards the seam. Ida, I saw your, your puppy has an eye thing. Poor puppy. Mine, you guys, the other day, oh, man. He's totally fine now, by the way. Yeah, you could wear it on the outside, Olivia. You could even top stitch your seams down. That's a thing. People people do that. You know, where um, your seams are sh exposed and you could top stitch it down so that it's a thing like that. It just looks like that on the outside. Totally a thing. People do that. Yeah, my puppy is totally fine now. The little bugger. <laughs> I want my side seam to press towards the back, so I'm going to start on the back and sew to the front. I'm getting the hang of this. I don't have to figure it out so so much now. Um, all right, I want my seam to press towards the sleeve, so actually I'm going to start from the hem and go up so it's a little easier to push that seam towards the sleeve. Because then it's going the direction the machine is sewing. And I'm going to sew my seam first and then put the binding in like I've been doing. I'm just going to continue that path. It's working. I may need to stagger my... I don't want to though. I may need to stagger my underarm seam when I get to it. Because... Binding over this is going to be pretty thick. I've bound over thicker... But, you know, I'll enjoy it. I might be, I think I can do it. All right. So I'm going to match my seam best I can here. It really wants to fight me on it. Okay. I'm going to get there. I'm trying to keep this seam completely on top. What it wants to do is push like that off, right? I'm trying to keep it straight on top of itself. I'm going to use the awl to kind of tell it that's what I want it to do. Oh, that's good, Ida. What a good dog. I think I shanked my uh, seam allowance right there for a second. Let me see. Yeah, my seam allowance got a little weird there. Let's see how I did on the matching before I fix it. It's in the underarm. It's not a big deal, but I do like to try and get it. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It could be better. <laughs> I am going to smooth out this seam allowance, though. And that does give me an opportunity to correct it a little bit. 
So the industrial machine kind of sews through that like butter. It, it is really nice. And at least my binding's gonna, you know, it's gonna cover that little bobble up. I'm gonna look at it and see if I got it worse or better. Eh, the same. Keeping it. No big deal. It's an underarm seam. Not my favorite style. Um, I really like it when the armhole goes like this. And I didn't do that on here because it's flat. There's just no arm's eye. So sewing the side seam and then sewing this underarm seam and setting in this type of sleeve is really, really hard because this sleeve doesn't have right angles right here at the juncture. Right angles are really important in pattern drafting and sewing and, you, and they are woefully missing on a lot of patterns and they're really important. So if you don't have a right angle going into this seam and this one going into this seam, you can't have a smooth transition. And on a kimono style, they're just not present at all. This isn't a problem with this pattern or anything. It's not like a misdesigned thing at all. This is how you do it. And that's why you don't set in the sleeve of a kimono pattern. It just isn't, it's just, it's more of a struggle than it's worth. <laughs> it's like uh, putting something pointed into uh, a less like a rounded a more uh, it's like a putting something that has a point onto something that's straight that's how it would have been to do that and I don't even want to sew that <laughs> so <laughs> it's also why kimonos fit the way they do they tend to slip to the back um, because there's no contour and uh, they tend to also, um, if, they're, if they don't sit well on your shoulders, they can slip off your shoulders. This one doesn't, mine doesn't slip off though. I really, I, I'm liking wearing mine. I'm wearing mine more as a robe, the one I made the other day. It's a nice little house jacket and it's nice having pockets. Pockets on a robe, man, they're really important. I don't know why so many of them don't have it. I like these little scissors I got. There we go. I'm gonna do my other arm underarm. Oh, touch the floor. It's like hot lava in my studio, you guys. Nothing can touch the floor. <laughs> oh, really, Nancy? That, your kimono looks really cute on you. Hi, Nana. Nice. Oh, I'm so glad. Welcome. I'm glad you're chatting with us. Thursdays are usually a little quieter day. You know, people got to work and do all that, you know, stuff. <laughs> I just sewed this jacket the other day or last week. When was that, you guys? A couple weeks ago. Um, and now I'm making an online version just because it kind of came to me. Look at all this thread now. My garment touched the ground. Hot lava, man. Okay. Lining it all up. Uh, because I released the pressure of my presser foot, it, I'm really glad that it's not shifting the layers. Hi, Louise. How's it going? Are you the same Louise that gave me that such a nice note in one of the comments the other day on the Jutland pants? I really like that. Thank you. All right. I'm going to look at my seam lining up there. Let's see if I can get a little better this time. There we go. Oh, should we look? How about I look? <laughs> I'm like starting to speed, so sorry. <laughs> oh, that one's not, eh, it's about the same as the other one. It's so, so thick right there that it really wants to be pushed off. Oh gosh, look at that. Yeah, I it is. It's lint lava. That's it, Nancy. Lint lava. <laughs> I am totally going to use that. <laughs> it would be so nice if we had little custom emotes for our channel. We could have a lint lava emote. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having sweepable floors. I'm hoping it won't be echoey in there, but um, the sweepable floors will be so great. I use, I do use a broom and sweep the floor in between vacuuming. 
Oh, I'm so glad, Na Louise. Thank you. I'm really enjoying doing it. It's really fun. I know it's nothing like, you know, you've, you've seen people like know the live streaming thing, but I'm hoping that you guys are all getting the hang of it and understand. Because it does seem to me like you're all understanding like what you can get out of this, you know, like we can, we can chat. Yeah, dog hair, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Steam Ripper emoji, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, is it Nancy who probably wants a, like a, you know, a, a cocktail glass with the Steam Ripper as a drink stirrer, right? <laughs> we need a Steam Ripper emoji anyway in the world. All right, so I'm going to sew this. From the back to the front, right? Back to the front, back to the front. My whole garment has been preparing me for this really long stretch of binding, right? I'm gonna try and do it so that I don't have to trim at all. If I, if I pay attention to what I've already sewed and I stay right up to the edge, I won't have to trim. I shouldn't anyway. I shouldn't keep just trimming my garment to fit. <laughs> That's a never a good plan. It seems like I'm cutting so straight when I'm trimming and then look at that. Like what the heck? <laughs> That's awesome, Olivia. I totally know what you mean. I will sometimes watch a stream from someone and they're not live and I'll try and type in the chat and I'm like, oh, they're not live. I forgot. That's the worst. I know that happens to a few of you here. This is, a, this is not okay. I'm going to straighten that out with my piece of bias here. It got a little okay. <laughs> It could be, it could be a, maybe it was straight and I just made it that way, you know? Thick, um, thick wool. Who does that? <laughs> we see you nodding your head, Olivia. We know, we know. Sometimes people's hands are busy, so they, they can't talk. All right, I'm going to go back and look at this. I'm definitely going to trim this because it's so thick. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll trim one a little more than the other, and I'm going to trim this one because this is the one. I'm going to trim this one still. But I'm going to trim this one a little bit more because I'm going on to that side. All right. Did any of you ever watch like a show like Sewing with Nancy? I've watched snippets, but um, she was just never on at a time where I could watch. I would try and look for her on PBS and then I, I would miss it. Um, the original YouTuber, so I, Nancy was. <laughs> she wasn't on YouTube, but you know what I mean. PBS, the original YouTube. I'm so pleased that the, it is not hard to bind this wool at all, you know? <laughs> Nancy, that's so funny. Yes, on TV, exactly, Louise. Yeah, Sewing with Nancy. Look, you can see my little, like, hook of my uh, pocket. Pretty cool. Probably a good reason that I could have used an orange bobbin because, um, you know, that is on the inside of the garment. I, you know, I'm not making this reversible, but still wanted it to be a little less noticeable. I, I, you know, I wanted to round my pockets on my other one, but I kind of felt like that one needed those angled. Hi, Lisa. And, um, I'm glad I did it that way. I felt like it was a little more needed to the straight lines, you know? And the kimonos tend to be really straight, you know? Okay, I really don't want to lose my width of my seam here on this junction. It's sewing totally fine, which is great. What a relief. But I do tend to like 
breaking up straight lines with some organic curves. It's it's kind of um, one of the things I became known for when I was a designer in the outdoor industry. Because when I got to the outdoor industry, a lot of people, their the design style was very um, straight. You know, there was a lot of straight lines on garments, and I just did my own thing. And they were like, "What? Uh, well, this doesn't really look like our stuff." And um, ended up being fine <laughs> like I ended up creating a trend of just like adding more organic curves to things you know plus the, the outdoor industry was so dominated by male gear <laughs> you know oh I wonder what show that was Nancy there has been there was another sewing channel maybe someone here will remember who it is I feel like I know who you're talking about. Hi, Mary Alice. What part did you miss? What do you want to see? You can always re-watch these uh, streams. It'll be uploaded afterward. It takes a few minutes for it to upload, just so you know. But um, and then you can fast forward and you can pause, which is awesome. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Let's see how it looks on the outside. Looks good. A little boardy. HGTV. Oh, okay. Maybe I don't know who that is. See, this is one thing about the sleeve. I almost want to make it bigger here, but I don't like big sleeves around my um, hands. I have kind of small wrists, so it is. It's it is loose. It just doesn't look like it. I mean, I know this is what I'm going to end up doing. I'm gonna end up cuffing it. Oh, well, let's see. I'll catch you up, Mary Alice. So, I made one of these Howery jackets. This will be for everybody. The other day, the Wixton Howery. And um, I made the long version. I made angled pockets, fully lined. Um, and I did line it my own way. <laughs> And then um, it just occurred to me the other day that I've had this boiled wool, I keep mentioning it, and I thought maybe I could make an unlined version. So I, I am I'm making an unlined version and I'm binding all the seams instead. So you just missed all the tedium of all the binding. This is a boiled wool and I got it at Blackbird Fabrics. They have a really amazing fabric selection. You Googled Nancy? Did you find it? Who, who it was? Was it a man or a woman? I, it, I remember a woman. So perfect. Yeah. Pow, called Power Sewing. Shirley Adams Sewing Connection. Oh, you guys know all the stuff. Hi, Leslie. You guys are such a good resource. I love it. Um, um, I bound my pockets and I just stitched them on. And um, now I am to the collar. Oh, no, no, no. I got to bind this side. So I'm binding one more seam. I'll bore you with all the details on how I do it so that you don't have to rewatch the video. How's that? <laughs> all right, so um, I want my seam to naturally press towards the back. So I'm going to start on the back, sew to the front. And then when I finish the binding on that side, see this little fold edge pushes this kind of just naturally makes the seam want to push it that way. So. That's why I'm being particular about which side I start on. Just my own personal preference. I'm obviously not following the instructions. <laughs> but when do I? <laughs> I've already trimmed my seam. So I'm trying to not have to go back and trim again. Because I also don't want to just keep trimming my jacket. I've had a lot of practice, Mary Alice. Ron Collins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool, Nancy. So at least now you know you can still keep up with them, right? A week-long sewing retreat. God. I want to go on a sewing retreat. All right. Uh, remember, I trimmed one of my seams a little bit more than the other on the other side. So I'm going to try and do that now. I forgot I did that. Uh, this one is the one I got sewing a little wonky, though. So I'm not going to get much closer there without unpicking and I'm not unpicking not this boiled wool no thanks
Look at my little hack and slash trimming job here. <laughs> I just want you guys to know that I was a really bad sewing student. I really was. I was just like, well, why can't you do it this way? Why can't you do it that way? And then I would find out why you shouldn't do it that way, you know? I'm a little stubborn. I agree. But I'm also very like, do whatever you want. There's no rules. <laughs> if you like the results, that's what matters. If you don't like the results and you're lying to yourself that you are liking them, that's a different issue. And I've done that. I've been that, that sewer and I still sometimes do that to myself. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> Sometimes it's not fine. So I'm just kind of, I'm going back and just trimming the seam allowance a little bit. I don't want to trim it too much. I kind of like it when the seam allowance fills the inside of the binding. It looks nicer. It behaves better. It doesn't look like it's torquing. All right. Is this my last binding seam? I got to decide how to do the collar seam. <laughs> my bravery with the trim it's just the seam allowance I can't I can't as long as I don't cut the jacket I have done that you guys I have been that sewer and, and I still do stuff like that like the other day when I was um unpicking that hem on my howry remember I was like okay my linen got stretched out and so I need to unpick the hem when I was trimming one of the threads I nicked the lining <laughs> And you can't see it, but you know, over time, it's a, like a little weak point. So, you know, and the boiled wool is so easy to deal with. You really don't even need to finish the seams. It just might bug you if you don't. Some, some of you, some of you might not care at all. Oh, I'm glad you do. Yeah, no, it doesn't need to be perfect. If, if you were going to sew like 20 of them to get it perfect, then fine. But um, if you're not selling it, I don't know. I don't see the point. Oh, God, Nancy, totally. <laughs> you guys have found your siblings. <laughs> I used to think it needed to be perfect, too, but that didn't last long. I'm just not not perfect I and I I know that what you guys see I, I'm making it look easy which I, I don't like that kind of sentiment because it's not it's hard and um it's just because I've practiced a lot that's all I I feel like I remember when my sewing took a turn for the better I just remember I remember exactly where I was at I remember where I was sitting I remember I don't remember what machine I was at um I remember the little apartment I was subletting at the time, I was about 26 years old, I want to say. I had moved to this little town, and um, I arrived there with a backpack and my cat. Hi, Margaret. What? Piping for the collar. Go away. <laughs> I might be able to do some edging. Let me think about it, okay? I don't actually have cord to do piping. You know, like the cord that goes inside. But you just need a, a cord and a zipper foot to do that, just so you know. But yeah, I arrived at this town. I had my backpack and a cat in my bag. I had a like a I have a cat carrier that's a bag. And then I had all my stuff shipped on two pallets, so I didn't have much. Um, but you know, I had a sewing machine or two. I have no idea what they were now. And um, I was every day applying at different places to work. You know, it was a college town, so it wasn't easy, but it was summer, so they were all gone, and so I had a better chance. And I applied at a fabric store, and I just, oh, you know, I've done these things. I'm a pattern drafter in the garment industry. industry. <laughs> that happens, Lisa, <laughs> exactly. I do, too. I buy fabrics and I'm like, oh God, like invisible zippers. I suck at those, you guys, really badly. <laughs> You're going to watch me figure that out this summer, watch. And um, when I when I went to apply to this fabric store, they're like, well, we're not hiring anybody, but here you go. Um, and they handed me a, like, a, 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 like a paper bag, like a flat paper bag. It was like this big. And it had this like weird pastel floral print that was really hard to see, very, very pale. And they said, you need to make something out of this. 
and uh, bring it back with your resume and a cover letter. And I was like, okay. I was like, this is cool. All right. And so then I came back the next day. I was like, can I have another bag? And they were like, oh, did you mess up? I said, no, I just need more. And they were like, okay. And so I, I ended up making my first quilt from this, this paper bag. And I just kind of selectively cut things so you could actually see a little bit of the pattern. I'm going to have to show you this, you guys, because my mom saved it from the campfire. And um, I haven't told you guys that because it's really emotional for me. <laughs> but um, so then I made the little quilt like an envelope with the top open. And I stuck my put my little resume and cover letter in it. And I quilted the top and handed it in. They were like, okay, you went above and beyond. No one's ever done this before. And um, but they're like, but we're not hiring. And so then I got a job at a hardware store. And two weeks into it, they called me and they're like, uh, you, need to, you need to work here. We'll figure it out. And so I did. And so when I started working there, I was around people who really cared about sewing. They really, the owner really cared about sewing. I will admit, and I'm really sorry if she ever watches this, I doubt she will, but she's a snowing snob. <laughs> and, um, and she was very much only natural fibers. That's all she sold. She had a lot of really amazing um, ethnic fabrics, wovens, hardly any knits at the time. Um, and it was just a really great place to be around people that were really into it. And they had a lot of folkware patterns and I could just really nerd out on it. And I just remember that was when I was just sitting at my machine. I was like, this isn't good enough. I am the boss of this thing. I'm going to make this do what I want. And I just didn't take no for an answer. And my sewing improved drastically from that point on. And then I would get in a rut and I would just like be like, that's good, that's good enough or whatever, or I, I just can't do it any better or it can't be done. And then I would be like, no, I'm going to figure this out. And that's how it happened. That's how I just kept working on my sewing. Is this my, is this my neckline? It is. See, ah, see, look at that. I think I trimmed this going this way. What is this? Oh yeah, see look, I trimmed this going this way and it should be, I think I did. I don't know, it's a little ratty, maybe I didn't. I think I did, and look, see now it's too shallow. That's why you don't do that sometimes. See this one's okay, it's okay, it's not great. The little quilt, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it sometime. Yeah, right Nancy, those, the, I really feel like, um, the needle sharp box are really great for stretching us like, okay, I don't think I would have picked this pattern or this garment, you know? Okay, so here's my collar. What do you think, Margaret? Do you think I could add piping to this? So this is my outer collar, this is my under collar. You, that's so smart, Lisa. Yeah, just read through the pattern and look at the hashtags of those, of those garments, you know? And then tell us what they are. Maybe we'll sew them here, you know? All right, so um, I'm going to try it on. Oh, it's a little scratchy. It looks a little big. I think the collar is going to help. I think I need to cut off the sleeves. Oops, this way, this way. I kind of want the sleeve to be like right here. Let's see. The I, camera makes me go opposite. I don't know. Maybe I would want it like this. Would I be sad if I cut my short sleeves off that short? <laughs> I keep going the wrong way. You see what I mean by the sleeve? Like, what do you guys think? <laughs> Walnut pants and toasty jacket. Who are those by? From Waffle Patterns. Okay. I'm going to check those out. All right. I will um, not cut the sleeve right now. Maybe I'll wear it for a little bit and decide later. Because that's a lot to cut off. <laughs> It's like basically look how short the sleeve would be. <laughs> but you know, the, the shoulder line is like, it's like right here. So that's all sleeve too. 
All right, let's put on the collar. So the collar is um, gonna be this on the top and then this underneath. And so I've been trying to decide if I want to, here's the ways to sew this. Don't get them too short, yeah, because it would kind of limit me. Keep the length, okay. Oh, okay, Lisa, cool. All right, I'll keep the length. I'm gonna wear it a lot, and if it, maybe cuffed, will, they'll be cute that way. As long as they stay cuffed, because I don't like it when they slip, you know? All right, so here's the things I can do. Oh, sorry. Um, I can sew around the three edges, short ends, long, the outer collar edge, and then, um, oh, the pattern names are in Dutch. Oh, cool. Um, sew and turn it, and then I have to sew it to where I sew one long edge to the jacket, and then I hem the other edge on on top of it. And then it's clean finished around the neckline, the way the pattern actually is written to do. I could do it that way. <clears throat> Margaret wants binding or uh, piping on it. I mean, I could, you know, do a little tip like this on the edge of my collar. I'm willing to do that, but I just don't want it to look too cartoony. <clears throat> I actually like that idea, though, Margaret. Um, I can also sew the three sides, sew and turn, you know, turn clean, finish it, same thing, and then put it to the jacket and bind the neckline seam. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's what I made. I understood that, Lisa. I'm gonna look those up. Waddle patterns. Brooke is making the waddle skirt. It was in her needle sharp box. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys think? Um, do we want a bound neck seam or do we want the turn clean finished seam? And do I want to do the uh, edge tipped? I'm gonna look, I'm gonna lay this down here and look at it. Cause these are kinda, you know, point and overturn questions. I can't really change it. So this is how it'll look. I'll try and give you a good idea how it'll look, okay? Let's see. This is like that. So it's gonna fold over on itself and it might do this, you know, when I'm wearing it. I could do this little piping edge. I kind of like that piping edge, honestly. It's a good idea, Margaret. I could round the corner to go all the way, or I could just do it on the short, the long straight edge. Margaret probably left. She's like, ah, she's not doing piping. Forget it. I'm out of here. <laughs> um, I don't have cording to make it pi actual piping to put in there. But um, if you do ever do piping, you guys, it's actually pretty easy. It's just, it's easy to sew. It's just hard to make it look really tight. And you need a um, zipper foot to do that. You have to press the cord and the seam all the way. Like you just need to snug it in there. That's how you do it. I don't do it a lot. I'm not a big fan of piping myself. But I think on the edge. Piping edge, you like that? I like it too. I think it ties in the pockets, you know? All right, so um, I'm going to... I have to think about this. And then I think... Do I want to clean finish the edge like this? Or do I want to bind it? Binding it would be easier. Um, binding it would be easier for me, but actually I think I will bind it because I want the stability around the neckline, you know, I just don't want it to be uncomfortable, but it will be softer. Yeah, it would be softer. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. I had to think about that loud. All right. Let me sew my, um, center back seam of this. Let's see. I actually cut this so that the pattern would kind of match. <laughs> I didn't spend a lot of time on it because I spontaneously cut it. I could do a bound edge, but um, I felt like that that was gonna be a lot showing. Like uh, it would be, you know, like piping is gonna show like, you know, this much, as much as I want. 
binding is going to show this much. And I felt like the little tiny tip. Yeah. You mean bind the neckline, Nancy? Is that what you said? Is that what you mean? Or do you mean the collar edge? I've been hoarding this little <laughs> print. I did pretty good. <laughs> Maybe I got the wrong end. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that looks pretty good. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. Uh, where's my, uh, here it is. Let's get my jacket out of the way. I already sewed my center back seam here. Um, I'm going to put the binding, the cording on right now. I'm going to measure it too. <clears throat> my seam is a half inch. If I do a half inch seam, I would have that much showing. So that seems good. Okay. Here's the risks with having a little piped edge. Um, there's a few. You can end up having a little torquing. It could end up looking a little baggy. <laughs> yeah. Bind edge. Oh, I don't know you guys. Okay. So binding the neckline seam where the collar attaches, but on the edge, the tip of the collar that's showing, I'm going to do the cord, the piping. Let me show you again. This is what I'm talking about. There's a lot of decisions. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm thinking. I'm going to show you the kind of the bottom down here. This is my under collar. So let's do it like this. All right, here's my under collar. So it's gonna get sewn like this to the jacket. And then when you're wearing it, it does that, right? Okay. So it might, you might end up seeing a little bit of the collar. All right, so the way I want to sew it is, because Margaret asked for cording, I can put a little bit of piping sticking out this collar edge, the loose collar edge that goes around the neck. And then the way I'm going to sew the collar to the jacket is I'm going to bind the seam like I've been binding all my other seams. That's what I mean by that, Nancy. This isn't really going to show. This will. So then there would be this little tiny piped edge around the edge. What do you guys think of that? If I bind the edge of the collar, like I've been, like I did this, it's a, it's a lot. Like it's, it would be the easiest way to sew, honestly, would be to do that. <laughs> that would be the easiest way. Um, it would be, you know, more like that much showing. And I run the risk of it pulling the collar, kind of drawing it. Why is it getting so dark on your screen again? Does that make more sense, Nancy? I'm kind of throwing all these terms that sound really similar to each other, aren't I? This looks so kitty on the screen, like childish. <laughs> So do we want a little bit of edge showing like that? Oh, you can't even see that. <laughs> My face is in the way. The core, I, I run the risk of the piping being a little, it might, it might not lay flat, especially when I go around the corner here, or I just stop it right there, you know, more, yeah, right, Lisa, I think so too, it should be more subtle, a bit, little bit poking out. Because, you know, you're going to get this splash occasionally of that too. And then I'm just going to bind it onto the garment. You like the piping better? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. I think we're still on the same, <laughs> same page. All right. So I'm going to do the piping um, to the edge first. And 
And I think that um, I'm going to um, not go on the short edge. I'm only going to do it on this long edge. And I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. It'll it'll probably stand a better chance of looking the nicest if I don't do it, um, do, if I don't turn the corner. Turning the corner is going to give me some issues. So I need to, I'm going to experiment with how I'm going to finish this edge now. My needle is a little big for doing a... <laughs> We're doing a little seam right there. Where's my, uh, where's my all? Everybody, oh, it's right there. Nobody panic. Okay, so, um, I convinced you, Mary Alice. I don't have to do it this way. Okay, so there's my, so that's what I'm thinking, like that. A little bit showing like that. <laughs> It didn't make it more complicated at all. <laughs> Margaret came in and she's like, I want some piping. <laughs> That's good. I like those challenges. And you know what? I didn't even think about doing that. So I like that. But I'm going to stop it right there at the edge because, you know what? This was supposed to be my center back seam. I need to take this out because that's my selvage showing. You can't, might, might not be able to see it, but I need to take this out. I don't mind. I don't like using the selvage, but I had to because uh, of the width of this of the what my fabric usage was so I made it so that it would be, my selvage would be at the center back neck underneath my hair and where the um, collars least visible but then I just sewed it wrong all right let's see here I like you're getting your guys's opinions you're going to see me wear this, and you, and you know, you're going to be like, oh, she probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm fine with, like, there being no no piping showing or just a tiny little bit. And it's not it's not really piping. It's more of a flat trim because I, I, I don't have the cording, unfortunately. What was the other garment? Oh, it was my pajamas. Remember my pajamas? I was totally going to do piping, and then I was like, oh, I don't have any cording. I really thought I had some. I don't know what happened to that. I'll bet it got in a knot and I just toss it. I, I'm not very precious about stuff. If it's going to be like a ton of work for me to deal with, I just get rid of it. Unless it's expensive. <laughs> then then I'll sit there and do it. Cording is pretty cheap though. All right, that is the, the end. Here we go. All right. I actually do think I am using the right side of the fabric, which makes me good. You like that, Darcy? Okay, cool. It does look that way a little bit. There were some other fabrics I was looking at that I was like, ooh, that's a little too, maybe vintage was what I was thinking, you know? And I didn't, I like that look, but I just didn't want that for this. I also didn't want to end up making something that I could only wear in the fall. Cause I feel like this color, that happens a lot for me. When I see other people wear it, I don't think that, but for me, I'm like, oh, that looks kind of like the fall. All right, so here's my little edge. I'm gonna tack it down. I might even iron it. Um, I'm gonna keep it away from the seam edge there. I'm trying to decide how wide I want it. Yeah, so if I, technically if I do a half inch seam Now the, the trick is that I, I really don't want this to get stretchy. I don't want my collar to get too stretchy. So if I had a cording in here, this is how I would sew this, but with a, with a zipper foot right up against it. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't do it all the way against the cording on this first pass. I would leave a little bit of room only because um, this isn't my final seam. So when I went back to do the final seam, I would want to make sure I could enclose this prep seam into the garment. See, now it's looking a little wavy. When I do this, how does it look? It's okay. 
Um, I'm going to pull it a little bit and see if that combats that or makes it worse. I'm just kind of curious now. I may have to take this out. The uh, boiled wool is a little thick, <laughs> so it's kind of like, I don't know about this, like the, the needle going down into it is, um, I can tell, making the ruffling partly an issue. I don't think that changed it at all. <laughs> it was worth a try, right? <laughs> okay, here's my center back seam, which I'm gonna leave open. When, I, when you don't have cording in uh, something like this, you run the risk of it not being um, equal width. And I, I I'll tell you right off the bat, you guys, I don't do this very often. Mine's not gonna be equal width. <laughs> it probably will look wider in some spots than it does in others. I'm not worried about it. A loose floppy collar like this It'll blend in, I think, you know. My backup plan right now is that I have enough of this orange to cut another collar on the cross grain again. If I'm not a big fan or if it goes badly. That's my backup plan. Intentional ruffles, there you go. All right, so I need to um, make the seam again in my binding um yeah in my it's not binding right now right it's just bias trim oh my needle is so big for that i don't want it to pull like i don't want my seam to pull and the the needle being that big can do that Just kind of, I'm just pushing it up straight so that it's nice and straight on the end. Yeah, that ruffling is because of the boiled wool being so thick. You know, because the, um, the, this is sitting and going into the wool. That makes sense. I'm trying to think of, it's like if you step on your mattress, you know, it makes the mattress go, may have those bumps. All right, there we go. And now I'm gonna put on my under collar. I'm gonna do it from the, the wool side so I can see my seam and I'm gonna do it a little smaller. <laughs> but I wanna be able to see that I'm not making it too uneven. This is all dependent upon the fact that this fitting in my neckline really well too. Let's hope it does. Okay, when I get up to here, I think I'm gonna make, I'm gonna kind of fold this little tip. Well, I'm not gonna fold that tip back, but I am gonna make sure, I'm gonna fold it a little bit. Just gonna push it over there. Don't want to catch the tip of my edge. I'm gonna line up my center seams right now. That's non-negotiable for me. And I'm gonna pin it so I don't have to hold it because it's kind of far. <laughs> yeah, I'm pinning it on this side. Now I'm gonna find another spot to grab it. Because the wool's already been like sewn, see it's already sagging a little bit. It's a little bigger, so I, I wanna combat that that's why I'm making sure right now where I want this to be at. Now you'll notice I didn't add any interfacing to my collar. I did that intentionally. Usually you would do it on the outer collar, which would be the wool. Definitely didn't want to fuse this to the wool. You can, it'd be fine. Um, but I wanted it to stay drapey. I didn't want it to get too boardy. I already feel like all the binding edges probably gonna make it a little boardy. So I'm going just to the left of my original seam. I don't want my original seam to show. I always love seeing how crooked I sew. 
I hope you guys can't see it, <laughs> but maybe you want to see. <laughs> Taking my pen out. All right, now I'm going to line up this again, this like I did the other one. I'm going to get rid of this thread right now. Find my little halfway point. Yeah, my sewing is not that straight. It will, yeah, exactly. I'm surprised, like, I'll go back sometimes and look at a certain thing in my video. Like, if someone's asking about something, I'll say, oh, yeah, you can go to this point in the video. And, um, and I'm surprised, like, what you guys can't see happens. Okay, I'm going to look at that corner a little bit, make sure before I clip it that it, it's okay. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be okay. I wanna know before I clip it. The reason you do this is that when this is folded right side out, this is gonna sit here and this is gonna sit here. So you kinda wanna get rid of as much as this as possible. Sometimes it's good to reinforce these corners, make sure your stitch length isn't too long. If it's a really open weave, cause you can end up poking out your corner too far, but you know, essentially all of this is gonna be on the inside. So the way to think of this is like this, this is what's happening, right? So making that the least amount of bulk there possible helps it lay the nicest corner. It's just kind of, it's logic. I know it's really obvious, but it's good to think about it that way. Oh, I should have checked that corner before I trimmed it. Let's check. I don't, I don't like poke it all the way out until I know, but I can't see this one. So I didn't get that right on the edge. See that? I'm, I'm going to sew that a little further. I can kind of see it now too. So I can actually see where that edge is. So I'm going to sew it a little closer. Ensure a success, right? Ideally, my little edge is going to poke straight up from there. Ideally. This would be a good thing to practice a lot before you do it. It looks pretty good. Pretty good. It's not that great. Let's see the other side now. This corner looks better. See how much nicer that looks? Uh, I think um, understitching this would be a really good idea. I don't really want to understitch it on the with the blue though. You know, so I'm gonna switch the thread to I think I have a dusty rose thread. Just a second. Let me look. I'm breaking down the place. <laughs> oh, I, this works way better than I thought it would. Okay, I was about to like go through all my thread, all my little spools. I'll just use cream on the bobbin. It'll work. I don't want to use the navy blue just in case it pulls up the threads and then you'd see the little navy blue dots of the bobbin. Not cool, right? So. So it's only been a couple hours, right? And we've got our jacket almost done and we've been chatting and we bound it. 
That's pretty good. A whole jacket? If you didn't bind it, you could make this before you went out for the evening. I know, that's kind of a lot. I don't like that kind of stress sewing. I've done it plenty. This thread's a little lighter weight. Okay. All right, I, already, I always sew a little bit when I change my bobbin. Okay, so I am going to bind this, uh, bind, um, understitch the long edge first and then decide if I'm gonna do the short ends. I can't get to the corner. I'm just gonna do the best I can, but it does mean I have to flip it right uh, inside out again. And I get right up to the corner best I can. I'm just pushing and I'll show you in a second how it looks. Pushing all of the seam allowance of the inside towards the under collar, which in this case is this print. Getting as close to the corner as possible. And now I'm gonna arrange it. I just wanted to get started. Now I don't have to worry about it. And now I'm just gonna push it apart. And witness how wavy and um, not evenly with my little trim is. It's better than I thought. Oh, good, Judith. I'm glad. Kind of just figuring that out as I go. This is all... Okay, so that's a little narrow. I really hope my collar fits into my neckline well. I should have checked. I really should have checked. Okay, so see, this is how I got, how close I got to my corner. Here's the stitching, here's the corner. It's about as good as I could do. I could have tried to get a little closer, but what can happen is um, you end up stitching on part of the collar, like you end up getting part of this kind of stuck in there. And then you have to take it out and... I don't mind re ripping out seams, but I don't like it when it's in a spot that could end up damaging the fabric. I still damage things when I rip seams out. Um, so I have to think about that. That got really narrow right there. Ooh. See how I'm starting and stopping? See, when I put the, the this cord edge in, I did that first seam, it would have been so much better if I just stitched very evenly, consistently, and didn't stop, stop, stop like I'm doing right now. Maybe if I had ironed it or pinned it, that would have given me more opportunity. Just gotta pick and choose your battles. If you're like, I absolutely want this to be perfectly narrow, like a uh, width, um, then draw it on there, iron it, pin it, do it all, you know? This is gonna be on a floppy collar. I kinda want it to look a little casual. I'm liking the way it's coming out. So now I'm spreading it apart as, as fat, far away from the corners I can, or as close to the corners I can. All right, so I got pretty close, but still, not all the way up there. You just can't get those corners. All right, so um, I am gonna do these short seams. What I don't want is this to sag underneath my collar like that. So I'm going to understitch it so it doesn't do that. It really wants to push it towards the wool too. Another good reason to do it. All right, I like the way this uh, edge looks with this. That was kind of serendipitous. I'm really glad that worked out. I really, I was like running around my uh, studio looking for fabric this morning for the under collar. And um, when I saw this, I was like, oh, I am so glad I have this. I, I was picturing something else and I didn't have enough of it. Or it wasn't wide enough, that's what it was, or something. So there you go. So this understitching is stops right here. That one stops right there. You can't get to your corners. It's the same on collars. This is just like doing, well, this is a collar, <laughs> but you know, like a um, standard shirt collar, a convertible collar. That's what they call those, convertible collar. I 
and I'm really pulling it apart. I really want this to be spread as flat as possible and spread as far as I, as I can. And as close to the corner as possible. Without stitching anything I don't want to be stitching. All right, let's see. Here's this one. That's got a little close to the edge there. But see, now look. The orange is rolling to the under collar side just naturally. We don't want that either, but it's better than the other way. Because when we stitch in the collar, it'll be like this. Ideally, when you do something like this, it's on a collar that was actually made, uh, just shaved off a little bit on those three sides. There's two short sides and a long side. So that it wants to do that anyway. So what do you guys think? I think it looks good. Not too much of a fan of the rounded edge of the boiled wool. Under stitching it probably accentuated that. Top stitching it would have gotten rid of it, but I don't want to top stitch on my boiled wool. I don't want to stretch out the edge and I don't want it to be that structured looking. So now I am going to, I'm actually going to walk this on my neckline because I'm getting paranoid. <laughs> and then I'm going to, um, stitch the collar edges together maybe once I see what I'm up against here. All right. I'm going to go about half inch away because I know that's what it's supposed to be and then decide. I'm just going to walk half of it. There's my center back. This is what I've got. That's what I got to deal with. It's a little bit different. Yeah, the piping was a great idea. We can thank Margaret for that. <laughs> it was kind of the thing it needed, you know? All right, so I'm going to, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna stitch um, my um, collar together. I'm gonna go flatten it out, stitch it, the, the long edge together, because I'm gonna bind this. And then I'm going to stay stitch my front because remember I got into a pickle last time with that. I'm gonna stay stitch the front right now. No, oh, I need to switch my thread back in a second. I'm doing it just under the seam allowance. I'm gonna press my uh, shoulder seam to the back. I'm definitely not pulling this while I'm doing it. I'm kind of scrunching it up for anything. So in the instructions of the pattern, what you would do is you would sew one long edge of the collar to the neckline of the jacket. And then you would fold the other edge on top and um, stitch it down, stitch it shut like a cup. You'll take a bow. Take a bow, Margaret. <laughs> it, this binding looks so good with the lining. So that that uh, that is a really good idea, you know? Looks so, look at that. I kind of want that to be the right side of my collar. <laughs> I think that peeking out would be cuter. You're not, I'm not even going to see it, but that's why I'm going to stitch down this collar right now. You know? This way I can. So let's see, what is it? It was the, the body of the jacket a little bit big, so that's okay. We're not worried about stretching this out right now. I'm going to pin this right here. So, like I said, the instructions of the jacket normally would be, and this is how I would do it, I would sew the, um, I would sew the outer collar to the inside of the jacket, right sides together. This is my jacket. And then I'd have a seam there, right? And then I would take my under collar, fold it over, and top stitch it down on the seam and then your collar would be done. 
that that's that is a uh, not an easy way to to sew it um but i would do it from the do the inside seam first and the outside seam last because the, the seam's going to more likely pop out and show occasionally um i did not do this on my other howry um i sewed it through the seam which i thought was much easier it didn't look like because i was struggling a little bit with that linen growing on me <laughs> but um it really was it was a the great the best way to do that I just popped open the side seam a tiny bit and then I sewed it just right sides together. The jacket sandwiched over the collar. Just done, one and done, that was it. All right, so now I'm going to, I think I would like to maybe iron my collar right now. I wanna make sure that my collar doesn't do this or this, right? That's why right now I'm gonna iron this and make sure that doesn't happen. And then I'm gonna just stitch it shut so that I know. And the other one I had stitched through. See, I feel like I could get this. Let's pull on this like this. probably could have used a little bit wider, you know? I don't think it would have shown much. Looks cute. I love this fabric. These dots are not really that orange either. I just knew I wanted navy blue with this orange, you know? Let me check it out. I need, I forgot I need water in my iron. Shoot. All right, so the other thing I need to do is my sleeve hems and my bottom hem. I need to figure out my bottom hem right now, in fact. Ooh, I need to figure out my bottom hem right now. I have to know how I'm gonna do the hem treatment because of the collar, because the hem meets the collar at the front. I have to know that. It's not like a, a shirt. The collar doesn't usually go to the hem on a shirt, you know? So let's walk this again and see how much room I have to kind of, you know, make my choices. Because I think I have a, it hangs down past the collar. This is interesting because I actually want the collar to be a little short like that, but I know most people will think that I did it wrong. Oh, nice. That sounds cozy. Oh, you did your hanging loop too. Nice. So nice, right? It's just so nice having that go-to spot. All right. So what do you guys think? I think I'm going to bind the hem, fold it to the inside and stitch it down like that, but on the inside. I have to think about this. What do I want? Yeah, I think that's, or you know what? Actually, what if I faced the hem with bias? Like that. I like that. Yeah, I do, Nancy. I really do, because it's not every time I remember that. Like my Tamarack, I had to add that later. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change my thread to blue right now while my iron, my iron's probably hot now, but. Yeah, I'm gonna bias face the hem because it's also another way to deal with binding and another hem, a way to hem something that we haven't done here before. Um, and I did not pre-wash my binding. I know I say that every time, like if you do this, you need to pre-wash your binding. This is a dry clean only jacket, so I can get away with a lot of leeway not pre-washing my binding. Cause I would have done it for everything. I would have done it for the seams. I would have pre-washed a ton of it. And then hoped I didn't have a big old knotty mess. All right. Stitch a little. I'm gonna iron my collar and I'll be right back.
You guys can entertain each other. I wish I would have put water in my iron. Just looking at my, I have a teapot sitting there uh, with uh, <laughs> water in it sometimes. Starting to rethink like putting my uh, collar, um, this being my top collar, because look, you know the the tipping, it really it, it just gets lost from the the blump of the wool, you know. That'd be kind of a crazy outer collar, though, huh? Yeah. Oh, I gotta do that. All right, I need to hem my jacket. Oh my gosh, I was all turned around there for a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Let's see, how much do I want? I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me play with this here. I'm going to, I'm gonna do a little bit bigger of a seam allowance. More like a 3 8 Maybe a little more. Yeah. I am ironing on a really thick felt pad. Yeah, it, it's awesome. I love it. Like I, I really like, I kept looking at them at the fabric store and um, I do have a ironing board and I have a little tabletop ironing board, the little guy. Um, but you know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like how the ironing board after a while it dips, you know, cause you have to replace the ironing pad or the metal is just right there. Or you, I mean, you can't even get a good ironing board pad anymore, you know, unless you spend bank on your ironing board, which I just haven't, you know, it, for chicken boots, I don't need to iron things, you know, so I haven't been garment sewing for a while, like I said. So I kept seeing this felt one at the fabric store which is geared towards quilters and quilters love it because um they're doing like flat stuff and you know it sticks to the felt so i decided to get one to try it out and, and i love it judith it's awesome um i had to get a little like sleeve board ham type thing for doing curves and inside of sleeves and necks and collars and shoulders and things like that but um other than that, I feel like it's been, a, I, I love it. I love that I can have shelves underneath, you know, and I don't have to use an ironing board. Ironing boards are also, I'm always tripping over them. Um, and they're just not, they take up so much space, you know. The other thing you can get is an over the door kind, but those feel really weird. You have to have the door shut to use it. I've had one of those. Um, the other kind I had, my, one of my favorite ones I've ever had was in this really old little, wasn't really old, um, not Victorian or anything, but it was probably built in the 30s. Little Spanish style house in California. And it had one of the kinds built into the wall. Uh, that was that was my favorite ironing board. Mainly because it was so cool. <laughs> it, um, 
But I wasn't doing garment sewing, ironing on it. I was just ironing my clothes that I wore each day. My iron at home is pretty good. My ironing board. All right, there we go. Um, I'm going to now edge stitch this as well. I don't want this to show on the outside. And they have smaller ones. It's a little expensive, but they have a smaller one than this as well. But for, if you don't have to iron a lot, like I don't think I would want this at home ironing my clothes every day. Yeah, the arrow chairs, what's an arrow chair? I want to know what an arrow chair is. <laughs> so I'm just edge stitching uh, my bias hem. I feel like I always pick the things that take the most sewing. Yeah, Judith, you might really like it. You might even just use it on top of your ironing board for a while until you get used to it. But yeah, you can just like like pull it out when you need. It's really lightweight. They're made in Oregon, um, which I found kind of interesting too. Okay, so now I need a, a different uh, bobbin. I need my orange bobbin. Oh, my sewing chair. Is that what it's called? An arrow chair? Yeah, I bought three of them at once. And um, they gave me a discount on buying three. I don't like this orange thread. I don't like this orange thread. But now I don't need three chairs because I don't have people working here. <laughs> um, let me look at my orange over there. Dang it. I'm going to do a trial. I'm hoping that this gets in, um, embedded in the thickness of the wool and it doesn't show up that much. <laughs> oh gosh, what was that? Okay, let's see. Oh, you can barely see it. I was being a baby. Got it. <laughs> okay, so here's my hem so far. Look how nice and flat that is. Um, this is the outside. I rarely sew blind, do I? Okay, so I'm actually going to wrap this around the seam allowance and then stitch it down. The reason I'm doing that is it's working out perfectly to do that. Um, sometimes when I've done bias facing hems, I'll have this little like bit of slack in between where the seam allowance is and the edge of the facing and then it has a little dip and it creates torque really yeah maybe it is an error i don't actually know aunt nancy i just i they, they're all over the fabric store i go to and i was kind of like huh that's interesting i wonder what this chair is and then they're a little of them there were some of them are so cutesy i just kind of overlooked them and then um I sat in one and I was like, oh, I get it. Because I'll tell you the difference between my chair is it is really shallow. Like it's kind of a small chair. Um, the front of it though is straight across, right? It looks literally like, like the overall silhouette of a dining room table chair where it's like four straight legs going straight down. But what I love about this as opposed to using an office chair that's a rolling office chair is that there's not that fifth leg of the wheel getting stuck under my my foot pedal, which makes it really dangerous because sometimes that'll happen. It'll push my foot pedal, make my machine go, and my hands might be there or something else might be there. And um, granted, it doesn't happen a lot. It happens often enough. And it just took that away. Like it's, it's like room there. I do feel like it's a little shallow in the seat area. Like I like a chair to come almost all the way up to the backs of my knees and this does not so I I don't know if it's worth the price to be honest I don't feel like I'm a really good review of it 
Um, Ran wasn't too thrilled over time with it either. But I do like the shape of it and the way, and I still use it, obviously. But if I'm sewing for eight hours a day, I will switch between this chair and the office chair throughout the day to change the um, what my body is sitting there doing for so long. Because I have some issues with my hips now from having an industrial sewing machine with a knee lift. It's a whole nother thing. Okay, so do you see, I actually am letting some of the wool come to the side, because look at that. That looks good, I like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Louise. I have one of those. That's exactly what I was gonna do, I think. This looks really nice, I like this. I don't want it to stretch out, the stretch the hem out though. So Brooke today is at a uh, bust fitting class, like a pattern fitting class for, for like the bodice. And that's pretty cool. She's taking all the cool sewing classes. I'm like, I want to know what she learns, you know? There's a lot of really good new information out there about fitting. Remember, I, I may know how to make patterns, but I didn't go to custom pattern drafting school. I went to garment pattern drafting school for the garment industry. <laughs> we didn't do custom. But, you know, in a, in a sense, it is because you're custom doing it per your company's size chart. But once you figured that out, that's it. You did it once and that was it. Then you did fittings on all your garments. All right. I like that. I feel like that just made me look like a really good sewer. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. Let's put our collar on. Maybe I'll uh, do my sleeves the same way. Don't you think? All right, so let's, um, I'm gonna stitch down. I got two different bobbins. I have two different threads colors right now on my machine, I gotta remember. You guys are troopers sitting here this whole time. I wanted to finish this one today though. Okay, so um, I'm going to make sure that this doesn't get off kilter by matching my centers. See, look at that. It does wanna be relaxed. It is more relaxed. I'm just doing this to secure it. It'll be easier to sew in if I do. We may need to ease a little bit more right now. I'm going uh, more into the fabric right now because I can tell my wool's right there. And I and I want to do that because I want that this tip to be on the edge. You know? <laughs> well, I you know, it's like sometimes I don't really feel like what I'm doing makes me feel that confident about my skills. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that like, ooh, that just turned out really good. It was like meant to do that. You know what I mean? It's different. When I'm just figuring it out on the fly and we haven't sewn a few and you know, it's not like the directions are telling me to do this, right? I'm doing my own thing. And in another fabric, all that stuff. It's like, ooh, sometimes it just like, that was what it needed to do. All right, I'm gonna feel this. I'm gonna look at it right now without looking at the other side to see how I feel first. And then I'm gonna look at the other side because this feels good. And I think when I turn it over, I'm gonna feel differently. Oh, that actually looks better than I thought. I do see a little bit of the trim. 
So I feel like I could do, see that? I could do that. I don't see, maybe I should have made it go there. I don't know. I cut this uh, under collar out in a hurry and I used the, the wool as the pattern piece. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. All right. I don't want any torquing. I don't want any of that. All right, I think that, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, okay. What do I got on here? I'm gonna do blue again. I think I have enough to at least get the seam on, maybe the whole thing. I have another bobbin. Just wanna make sure I don't run out. Okay. All right, so I want my collar to be like this, right? So I'm gonna sew it right sides together. That is the right side. The under collar being against the outer jacket is the right side, like that. That's what I want. But it's gonna be more like, yeah, that, okay? Yeah, I know I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I shop all kinds of places. You know, sometimes you just see that fabric and you're like, I have to have that, you know, and you don't know what you're going to use it for. I try not to do a lot of that, to be perfectly honest, because then I end up with, you know, two and a half yards of orange boiled wool and I only needed a yard and a half, right? So, but when you see prints like this, this I feel like I got on an online thing and it was like a last piece and I was like oh I've never seen that fabric I was the last person to see it obviously <laughs> everyone else knew about it and I, I got it but I shop at my local fabric store honey run quilters um I shop at hearts fabric in Santa Cruz online blackbird fabrics a little bit lately but they're in Canada to me and I've done Finch um sewing studio and they're on the east coast who else I don't regularly go and look at fabric, you guys. I shop for a project. I know that's not as sexy. I did just buy fabric from Hearts over the weekend. They had gotten some new French terries in and um, I one of them really appealed to me. It was like a speckly confetti woven and um, I bought some of that. I bought something else too. Dang, I'm just realizing they probably are sending me fabric. I gotta change my address soon. Okay, let me see here. I'm gonna look at my opening here, see how much, how am I, how am I gonna struggle? <laughs> am I gonna struggle to put this in here? Probably. I'm gonna do what I've been doing. I'm gonna sew it in first and then do the binding so I don't have to worry about it. that stay stitch is already helping all right so uh see I'll, see this has got a contour on it this does not so i'm gonna kind of look at this i'm gonna tr i'm gonna just go like this so i know that that isn't the edge i'm going for it reminds me so let's see what about the middle it's about right there so that's how far I have to go to ease. In production sewing in a factory, what they say is like, say sometimes when you design something as a designer, I'll actually get pushed back from the floor, the production floor. If the seam is in a length that makes it awkward for the sewer to hold more than 12 inches. So they want it to be able to just go to town like this. You know, and they want to have to not have to hold something more than 12 inches long. And if it is, they need something else. I know that's a crazy, weird little thing, but it's true. Um, I did that and then I got a little bit off. I mean, obviously they're going to do what you designed, but at the same time, they'll say, hey, can you alter this? This is really hard for them. It's a weird length. I keep getting on my stay stitch. Pushing. <laughs> oh, that's good, Nancy. I'm glad. 
I like dealing with them. They ship right away. If they have a question, they reach right out to me. Um, if I have a question, they always answer immediately. Um, and I don't have any special relationship with them or anything. They're just they're just really good. I was kind of getting hoping I was going to get to visit them next week and see them in person for the first time. All right, I need to touch up one of those seams back there. I saw that. I'm sure you guys did too. Get rid of this pin. That's my center back neck. I'm already halfway. Now I'm going to pin this down here. Look at all the thread colors I have. <laughs> I have orange, blue, and um, the pale pink. <laughs> this one's non-negotiable, as I like to say. So that looks crazy, right? That looks like, how is she gonna ease that in there? But once you do this, it kind of relaxes into it. You see that? It's partly the stay stitch and partly because just that curve is an optical illusion. And it's not as hard to make the fabric kind of um, relax into it a little bit, you know? I'm not forcing it. If it, were, if it were forced, you would be able to tell and I'd be saying something. I'm not gonna hide that. What I gotta watch is that I don't get any puckers at the shoulder seam. I'd much rather ease it uh, on either side of the seam, not at the seam. All right, so. Like this would be a really awkward thing for a production sewer to sew. I know they do it. I'm not saying they don't. But this would have to fit so perfectly and they would also have the machines calibrated for the fabric they wouldn't sew, most likely they wouldn't sew this exact same style in four different types of fabrics on the same machines back to back. They would do all of the boiled wool, then they do all the linen, and they do all the rayon, um, just in case the machines needed to be adjusted a little bit. They would never adjust the pattern just because every time they put it in there, the collar got a little big on the boiled wool and it was smaller on the silk. You know what I mean? They would never do that. They would ask you to but the design room would push back. Like, nope, you need to fit it in there. Okay, I, my pen lied to me right there. I may need to back up a little bit. Eh, I'm gonna back up a little so I'm not easing that much in right there. <laughs> Ooh, cool, Louise, that's awesome. 11 weeks long, you're gonna be a pro. That's cool. I worked at a place that did um, like fitness apparel and um, I still never really got a lot of bra experience there. It was kind of a bummer and I was the only pattern drafter but they just had a lot of that sorted and then all their stuff that was made overseas was done by pattern drafters there. I didn't get to touch it. I was kind of disappointed. I did some bathing suits and that's about it and that's different. Especially on a triathlete body. They have their own fitting issues. It is not fun in the sun, fitting issues. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough right there. Let's see. What do you think? Am I stretching it? I think I can do it. All this mess will be covered in my binding. You do, Olivia? I'm glad. I'm pretty sure some of my knowledge is a little outdated. I haven't worked in it in a while. And so much of it, unfortunately, has moved um, overseas that I don't, I'm not really familiar with their practices there. All right, I'm going to trim this down. I'm going to open it up also and look at... Um, Places where my stay stitch might be showing on the other side, because that's not okay. And we're almost done, you guys. Though, if I were to change this pattern, not that you're asking, but um, I would change the back of it. I would put something interesting back there. Like maybe a, a horizontal seam and then a pleat coming out of it or something like that because it's really a big canvas back there. 
I don't find it very flattering. That would be my change to this. If I were to just go totally rogue <laughs> and be like, I'm doing whatever I want to this pattern. Because believe me, you guys, it's going to happen in the future, though. I'm going to start going rogue more often. <laughs> But soon I'm going to need another closet, too. I don't need to make clothes. I would love to make jackets all the time. Not like this, the, like, I don't like a trench coat. I don't really need that. Um, or a pea coat or anything like that. I don't need that. But, I, you know, like, I'm looking forward to making the jean jacket. Is this not stitched down? Oh, look at that. It didn't stitch down. When machines go rogue. What the heck happened, machine? You know, toasty jacket, two vents. Oh yeah, that sounds cute. <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> it's painful, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm just looking for my uh, stay stitch. I feel like it's poking out in some places. It might be hard to see though. Maybe not. Let's bind it. Ooh, it's so cute. So cute. All right, so let's see. This is how it's gonna be. I want the seam to be pressed towards the body. So I am going to sew it on the body first. And then onto the collar. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wrap around this edge. This is where my binding will probably show on the outside is because I'm gonna wrap this edge right here. I'm gonna try and do it really tight. Really tight. Okay, I got it started now with my garment up here. I All these fabrics coming together is making me really happy. I'm really glad that this worked out. I, I wasn't really sure, you know, I, I felt like I was forcing it a little bit. But sometimes when I'm like, yeah, that kind of works, I'm like, that's not good good enough. <laughs> Nancy, you're so funny. I would love to stream for hours. I don't know how people do it with their voice, though. Like, mine's a little sore already. I lose my voice really easily, though. I might add a third stream during the week, and it'll be a little less structured. You know, maybe more experimental. Um, I'd like to add a, a later one for the folks, um, you know, in the Australia, New Zealand time zone. Because I think there's a few of them that would like to join in. That would just leave out the Scandinavian crowd a little bit. Trying to stay close to that cut edge so I don't have to trim it again, but I think I will. No, 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 Jackie, don't go. Just stay there. Just stay there. <laughs> you know? All right, so I'm getting close to the end. I'm going to pull a little bit. Wrap it really tight. Look at it. Get rid of some of these wider areas. You know, where I straightened out my seam. <laughs> I can't, I want to clip the neck. But I can't. It's going to be bound anyway. It doesn't really matter. I guess I could. I wonder if that would help. That's an interesting question. If I clipped my neck. It's already being trimmed. But I wonder if clipping into it would actually make a difference. When I'm about to sew right over it. Interesting. Interesting. That's right, Nancy. I know you're always drinking coffee at like 11 <laughs> for me or, and then it's like two for you, right?
It's a little wide over here. This is a really awkward angle to trim, you guys. <laughs> Cut me slack. Look at all that I'm trimming off though. It's a little bit much. I don't want my collar to get thinner in places than others, but it could. That's what happens. You start trimming and monkeying around with your seam allowance. Oh, it's really thick right there because of the shoulder seam. Uh, I wanted to check to make sure I got my shoulder seams in there. Oh yeah, I did. That was lucky because remember that one I trimmed um, and it was a wrong angle. So maybe it was okay to uh, short myself there. All right, let's do this last seam. So yeah, see my binding edge might show a little bit. So it'd be nice to make it look nice. So and when we learned that when we want to fold it like this, getting right up there is not okay. But I want to fold it back here a little bit more. That way it has room to wrap around and I might get a closer fit. Maybe even further. This one's much, this is much thicker than that, that other one. See, I'm folding it pretty far away. Here's the seam. There's the fold. That worked right there. I went through a lot of binding today. Okay, looks good. Wish I had a photographer. <laughs> yep, second copy at 2.30, exactly. I noticed that. So this time I do want my binding to stay all on the seam allowance. I don't want to um, ooch into the collar because the collar is a free moving object. You know, it's like loose. So I'm going to put the fold just past the seam, but I'm going to stitch on that seam or to the right of the seam. Otherwise, um, I may end up stitching onto my collar. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, you don't want to monkey around the seam allowance. Keep monkeying around it like I keep monkeying around it either. Machine sounds different. Might be time to get its first tune up, but I've only had it since August. And I'm about to move my machine, so I kind of want to wait until they're moved. Almost halfway. There's the halfway. I'm, ha I'm having to do little bits because it's kind of thick. And it, uh, it's having trouble staying folded under, you know. Now I can do a little bit more and then use my haul, which is way easier. This is the only one of all my bound seams that is going to probably be visible occasionally. So I do want it to look pretty good, you know. Can you see my selvage holes? <laughs> I'd say, ah, those will wash out, but uh, can't wash this. All right. So Saturday, you guys, it could be Nancy. It could be. I I've thought about that too. Um, but you know, it's kind of built to handle it. It just could be a different sound. It sounds um, jingly. <laughs> it's so relaxing. I was just thinking this must be really boring. <laughs> <laughs> they're like can't you get music can't you guys can't Sarah me figure out how to do the music <laughs> I'm trying you guys 
So, um, I am on Saturday. I'm going to sew another pair of ginger jeans. I know you're like, great, another pair of ginger jeans. But I'm just going to sew them straight through. I'm just going to do it, the whole thing, start to finish. Um, we'll see how I feel about adding the uh, buttonhole at the end. But um, I am walking away from here with another pair of jean ginger jeans. I'm only wearing those lately, and that's it. That's how, you guys, that's how I feel about gaming streams. I have them on in the background. I love hearing them talk and chatter and get excited about what's going on in their game. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty thick right here. I think I'm going to trim it a little bit because it's really thick. See how thick that is compared to right there? Let's just trim it down a little bit. Not me, just the seam. I pulled really tight when I wrapped it and it looks really good. Sometimes it doesn't work out so nicely. Okay, so let's do my fold, folding trick here. Not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna try and Tuck that in there though, the little cut edge of the fold. Oh, you guys didn't tell me I ran out of bo bobbin. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> so close. No music? Okay. I'll think about it. I may put music on sometimes. I kind of need it. It's so dead quiet in here. I'm just talking to myself. I'm really glad that my UPS driver forgot he was going to come today. Oh, I guess he wouldn't. He would might come by now. <laughs> oh, cool. A pie day sale. Oh, is it pie day? Where's my binding? All right, bummer. You know how I feel about running out of bobbin on a seam. This always happens, right? You know, um, you know what's interesting? About the time I was thinking it sounded better was probably when it ran down. So that's interesting. I don't know. It sounded better for a second there, and I was like, huh? Because it wasn't sewing. You can hear my clock ticking. Dang. When I listen to the stream, I actually don't go back and watch the streams, but what I do is when I want to link to one of my streams to something, it automatically starts playing, and so I get a glimpse of me. And so most of the time, it's just on the stream starting soon page. But if I've gone to that particular video enough times, it's ooched a little bit each time into the video and then eventually I'm sitting there talking and I'm like, no, I don't want to hear myself. And I always think I sound, it sounds too quiet. Like I feel like you guys, I'm surprised you guys aren't saying, can you speak up? And I'm kind of like talking really loud in here. It would be nice not to. I wish I could talk in a normal voice, but I think it's too quiet to do that. So no music. Okay. I'll think about it. It would just be really quiet in the background. That looks good there. Not so good right there. But remember my seam's pushing towards this way. I just panicked and thought I put my collar on upside down, but I didn't. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Let's look at this again. Sleeves are too long for me. The collar feels nice. Can't see me though. Oops, this way. Sleeves are a little long for me. Yeah, I used to have one of those, Judith, um, for the first few weeks, and then it died. 
Um, I think I'm going to trim off I'm gonna do the facing. Um, that's true. Yeah, right, Nancy, I'll try the music, exactly. And then you guys can tell me, no music. I'm just gonna trim like a half inch off and that's it. I promise, Darcy, I'm not trimming it all the way down. <laughs> I know a couple of you were like, don't make it short. I'm just gonna trim a little bit and then I'm gonna face the hem like I did on the other thing. Thanks, Christy. It's not as a uh, uh, scratchy as I thought, because I'm and I'm pretty warm right now. So if it were cold, it'd be fine. Pretty sure. And if I had a long sleeve shirt on, where's my other sleeve? Oh, I forgot a loop. A loop would have been nice on this, Nancy. How did I forget? Dang. I did, Darcy. I made the short length. So a couple weeks ago, I made the long length and I made it lined. And it was my Needle Sharp subscription box. And um, I've had the spoiled wool kind of staring me in the face all fall. <laughs> it's getting kind of late to make jackets, you know, in the season. And then I, um, it popped in my head to do an unlined version with the boiled wool. And so that's what I did today. I bound all the seams on the inside. And then... <clears throat> just, <clears throat> excuse me, just faced the collar. Like I just added an under collar. Mm -hmm. I agree, Nancy. How many yards do you think I use? Um, I can figure it out really quick. I'm really good at that. Let's see, because I did use quite a bit. So let's see, can one of you tally while I, while I tell you numbers? One of you better be tallying, ready? All right, so <clears throat> we'll say about a yard and a half for the hem. <clears throat> about a yard and a half for the collar seam, the neck seam. About a yard and a quarter for the shoulders. Um, a yard for total for sleeves. And then for the underarm, about a yard and a half for the um, underarms, maybe a little bit more. And then there was the pockets. So I'd say about a yard for the pockets. And then I'm gonna do the sleeves, which will be another, we'll say a yard total for the sleeves, like hems. Did anyone tally all that? <laughs> so probably in the sub 10 yard range. Did I miss your reminder, Margaret, for the loop? Dang it. Yeah, I, I could probably add something, right? I could just add it right there. Real quick, real quick. We'll do it and then I'm gonna do my hems, my sleeve hems. I don't even know what I'm doing for a loop. Let's see, I'll just sew this into. Okay, same. Bias for a loop is not ideal because it gets it, it gets kind of stretched out. But um, maybe I'll stitch this on both sides to stabilize it. There's my little loop turner. Sorry, I'm probably not under the eight and three quarters. Thank you, Nancy. There you go, Louise. Eight and three quarters yards to buy it, bind that, and it was the short version, and I'm a size medium, and I didn't pre-wash because I'm doing bullet boiled wool. All right. Here's my sleeve. It's not too late. It's right on time for my loop. <laughs> this is too long, but I'm just going to sew. I sew sometimes these little, these weird little fiddly things. 
I will sew them um, big so then I can kind of pick and choose the length of it I want. I'm gonna stitch it on each side because it's biased to stabilize it a little bit more. It doesn't really want to do that. It's fighting me. <laughs> this would have been a good thing to run for my binding machine, but that's a little decadent, I know. Oh, but it wouldn't have been so nice, nice and finished in the seam. Okay, so do I want it like this? I think I want it like to be forced down. I, I really want that in the seam. I and I it, it is I'm sure it's painting a couple of you that I'm not putting it in the seam, but um I'm not gonna go back now. I will forget all about this soon. I'll just be thankful I put it in there, to be honest. <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew it and then sew it, fold it down on top of itself. I put the pins there so that I evenly spaced it. So I'm gonna do it a little bit shallow right there. On the edge and I'm gonna fold it down on top of itself and encase that raw edge like that I'm gonna get rid of all these threads to make it look like it's fine right okay so that right okay now I'm getting myself turned around I should have done both at the same time let's see like this, okay. Wait, 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 like this, okay. Right, that's how I want it, okay. <laughs> Get rid of my threads. Now, get rid of my pins. Get rid of my loop turner. Makes it less frustrating when I'm already frustrated. I forgot it. And then I'm going to encase the raw edge. So I have my loop now. <laughs> it's like more like a handle. <laughs> I might go back and fix that later. We'll see. Okay, let me uh, let me face these hems. All right, so um, I'm gonna start on the right side. I'm gonna fold it back on itself like this. This is how I do a continuous loop of binding. Um, it's nice that I can just nestle it right there into the seam. I'm trying to remember if there's any pitfalls with that. Pretty sure that's okay, so I'm gonna do that. But I'm actually gonna check to see which way the seam is supposed to go. And it's supposed to go this way. So it, I'm glad I checked that. All right. I like sewing things like this from the inside of the sleeve. I just changed my seam allowance because that's what I did on the other thing. All right, so I'm gonna do it at like a 3 8 inch seam allowance to get this facing, the bias facing him. And then when I come to the beginning, I'm going to cut my bias where this raw edge is right here. See that? So I'm going to lay it on there. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just a good guide for memory. That's all. As long as you go past your fold, your this fold right here, you're okay. And then make sure you stitch where the stitching line was. Otherwise you get weirdness right there. So see that? Okay. And then um, I gotta change my bobbin, don't let me forget. I need to uh, do my understitch. It's 
So I will say like, when you bind anything or do it, you sew things almost three times, right? You're, you're sewing it three times. So I don't necessarily think this is the fastest or easiest way to do an unlined Howery. Ah! My presser foot pushed that up. Um, but it does give a nice effect if you're feeling like, oh, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm cutting corners by not lining it. I didn't think I was cutting corners by not lining it. I just didn't want it lined because it's, it's boiled wool, you know? I, I would only want it lined because of comfort or if I live somewhere colder. But like I keep saying, I don't live somewhere very cold, you know? I live somewhere pretty hot, and even then it's like, we have air conditioning too, so. Okay, so then um, we'll turn it and then we'll top stitch it down. But then I need my orange bobbin, so I'm gonna do both sleeves at the same time for that step. All right, so. I'm getting lost in my jacket again. Okay, here we go. At least this jacket's a little smaller, you know, like it sits on the table nicely. Okay, so my seam, uh, underarm seam wants to go this way. Okay. I start right sides together on the outside of the jacket. My seam allowance is pressed that way, so I'm actually gonna start on there so it stays that way. So I don't forget when I get there again because I've already figured it out. I already took the time to figure out which way that needs to go, you know. All right, I'm doing it. Um, there's my lovely cutting again. You like that? I know you guys are all working hard to get there. <laughs> all right, here I am again. have to cut it off. I just like getting it out of my way as soon as I can. Now I can get rid of this roll of binding anyway off my sewing table. When you're doing this you got to make sure that you're not pulling it or letting it too loose because it's a boiled wool's a little bit stretchy. The bias is really stretchy. They're about the, about the same amount of stretch actually and then um, you just wouldn't want to make it stretch it out and then you have a little bell at the bottom of your sleeve that can kind of look cute sometimes but you know and then um, you also don't want to um, bind it so that it doesn't stretch very well like you want it to have some give so just do your best That time I was aware of the presser foot catching on that and it didn't happen. It don't, I think it only happened because uh, it's so thick. Tip on folding it over inside and then going over the top to attach. Yeah, right? I know. It's so simple. Because then look, you know, are you talking about this, right? Because then when I go to this side, I just like, it, yeah, so that's open right there, but it does not matter at all. You can do that for this trick on anything. Placemats, quilts, uh, any edge, you can do that. If it's a continuous circle like this, like a placemat is or a quilt, you know, you can just fold it over and then match it like that. That's all you got to do. I figured that out the hard way, so you don't have to. <laughs> all right, let me put my bobbin on. Now I'm going to turn my sleeve um, again so that it's, so I'm stitching on the inside of the circle. I don't have a free arm on my machine. You know, like you guys have this, this, the bed of your machine is maybe up on the table and then your sleeve can go around that like that. That's a free arm 
When people talk about free arm, that's what that is. I don't have that. No, you don't need to use a pattern piece to make the binding. No way. <laughs> no way. As long as it's a continuous circle, like I said. But you saw when I did the collar. I don't know if you saw when I did the, the edge of the collar. I just stopped sewing, went to the edge, turned it, and then cut it off. And then I went back to sewing it on. All right. So remember, I um, fold this to the inside. And then I wrap the binding around. I'm going to start and stop near this seam, but not on it because that's kind of thick. Remember, I have like layers of binding. I have the wool. I have the binding on the wool. There's a lot going on here. So I'm just going to kind of do it near the underarm seam like that. Did I sew a little bit with my... Yeah, I think so. For my bobbin. This is honestly coming out far more um, like finished and polished than I actually thought it would. Um, I hadn't really thought out the whole, thought it all through till this morning and I was like, hey uh, Duffy, uh, how are you gonna finish that uh, neckline, <laughs> that collar edge? And I was like, shoot, I need an under collar. Like I could have not, but I didn't really like the, the options with that. Only well, possible, I could have bound it. I could have bound the edge of the collar. But it was that was just a little too much. I can tend to go binding happy, so I got to be careful. I got to rein it in sometimes. Oh, so my bobbin shows there. Let's see if I can get rid of it. I think it's a little leftover thread. Yeah, it is a leftover thread. See now it's loose. Womp womp. Was it even there to begin with? All right. Okay, that looks better, huh? Phew. Thought I was gonna have to unstitch that and I don't want it. Yeah, my machine has, it's uh, got a little like thing I can put, fit over the free arm. So if I cuff my seams, what do you guys think? That looks okay, huh? I think that looks cute. I like how flat that makes it. I actually like that it makes it stay open. Um, because I don't really like these sleeves and I don't really have an idea of how to change it without really changing it. So, all right, so now I got to turn this sleeve the other way. The loop is cracking me up. I, I put a handle, not a loop. <laughs> I put a handle. I maybe need to make that smaller. <laughs> it was the panic loop. We'll just call it the panic loop. That's what it was. <laughs> all right, so um, fold this to the inside. I'm wrapping my edge with the bias, which makes it a lot easier and lay nicer. And you don't get that weird, like little um, torquing gap <laughs> that happens. All right. Oof, I think I should have trimmed that a little bit. Hope you guys can see okay. All right, let's see here. My cord isn't, you can't see that, can you? Okay. It was a panic loop. <laughs> I think the uh, piping was a great idea too. It kind of brings it all together. Margaret wins the prize today. <laughs> Yeah, so Saturday, I'm gonna sew the gingers, but I'm gonna sew them straight through. I'm pretty sure I can just do it like straight through. You're, you're obsessed with it. I'm, I'm glad, Christy, I love it. I've been selling, I was I had put a ton of it for sale on my website the other day, and I was kind of like, there's no way all this binding is gonna go, but people bought a lot, and I'm so happy because I feel like I'm always trying to like tout the <laughs> benefits of it, and I think people get it now. I love it. I don't like that my my bobbin thread kept coming through. It, you know, it's it happens, right? Oh, there we go. Now I've got it. I got it out now. Okay. So um, it's I'm I'm calling it my speed run ginger jeans. Um, 
I am pretty, I'm really happy with the fit of my ginger jeans. So I'm just going to cut them as is. The only thing I'm doing with this pair is um, straightening the leg, making it a little less um, cropped. They're not cropped, but they're at my ankle and they're a little bit slim. And that's it. I think that's the only thing I'm gonna do, so. All right, should I try it on? <laughs> <laughs> my panic handle. <laughs> this feels really good for no interfacing. Wish I would have picked a different shirt to throw it over. Oh yeah, there's a ton of web. There's a ton of bias binding left on the website. Okay, what if I? Okay, I gotta move my chair out of the way so I can stand over this way. This is cute. Uh, 11 a.m. on Saturday Pacific. So right now for me, it is 1.10. I haven't changed that clock on the wall, so I was like, oh, it's not that time at all. It's 1.10 right here. We've been live for a little over three hours. You guys are troopers. Um, okay, go onto my website and it says shop materials for sale on that tab. That's where it's at. Bias binding, I think it's the very first one listed. You can also search on there. See if there's any you like. There's a lot left. Thanks, you guys. I like it. It does. It feels really good. It's not like soft and fleecy, like you know, it's it's wool. But I I I'm used to that feeling. I like it from all the hand knit sweaters I have. So the autofocus is doing stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the help and the ideas. That turned out great. And, um, I'm going to take this off right now because it's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> I'm going to laugh every time I see it. <laughs> but feel free to leave if you want. <laughs> Oh, nice, Darcy. Yeah, I'm help. I'm happy to distract you um, while you're, you know, so it's not so painful to do that. Okay. <laughs> no panic loops. You know, sometimes you do a good job on something and one little thing really detracts, right? So... It's best to get rid of that one little thing if it's really detracting. Come on, come on, come on. The other one came off so easily. I really made it secure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to shorten it. I'm going to keep the loop. I'm just going to shorten it. But I have to remove it off both sides. If I shorten it, it won't reach to the other side. There we go. And this time, let me uh, let me try it first before I commit. Okay. How about like that? Where's the center? I like, I don't like it when it's really tiny, you know? I would rather it be like this, you know, like long than that weird handle looking thing. But I think like more like that is what I'm going for. It's really hard to tell where the center is. Okay. Like this. I'm going to do a little bit more. It's going to get too short. Okay, maybe I'll stop there. Like that. 
Yeah, that seems that seems doable. I could do that. Okay. Okay, this time I'm going to uh, do both sides at once too. <laughs> Just need to mark my distance because I, I like it centered. It was already kind of a janky little loop, you know? It's not twisted. <laughs> I'm going to trim all these threads. Now I'm going to fold it back on myself, on itself, and then sew it right where the binding was sewn. Like that. Not ideal. Much better if it would have been in the seam. But you know, handmade, right? Handmade, yo. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh boy. I think the sewing fairy is trying to tell me something right now. Maybe I don't need this loop. I can always add it later, right? Oh my God. At least I can see where my stitches are. I don't want to accidentally take out the other stitch. Oh boy, you guys. All right. No loop. No loop. Not doing it. Taking it out. You guys are all quiet. Wasn't your fault. I'm not blaming you that I forgot to change the bobbin back to blue. <laughs> okay, guys. Well... I still ended up with a fantastic jacket today. Saturday, I'm going to end up with a fantastic pair of jeans, right? So that'll be great. Good week. I need these things. That'll be good. Um, and then um, I kind of wanted to use the denim I cut out too for another pair of Mountain Views because it's super stretchy. And then I think next week, maybe I'll do a skirt. You're going to buy it all in a wool mat. Awesome. I'm about to sneeze. Just going to warn you guys. Okay. Let's see. Why can't I grab that? I can't grab it. Sometimes the awl is really good for taking out. Because, you know, the steam ripper has a blade on it. And it's nice to use something without a blade sometimes. So that you know you're not going to cut the, cut the fabric. Yeah, that looks so good without a loop. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to go for. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Oof. I'll save this little guy in my little sewing thing over here. Cool, guys. Turned out really cute. Thank you so much for all of the ideas and the feedback. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. You know? This turned out really good. I love, it's one, this is one of my favorite bindings I've had here at Chicken Boots. I didn't even have any to sell. Um, I would have hoarded another roll of it probably. Yeah, that's pretty cute. What do you guys think? Yeah. You bought a loop turner. All these sponsorship opportunities, I tell you. Thanks guys. Appreciate all the help today. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. And um, I'm looking forward to the Ginger Jean Saturday. Mainly because that is a selfish sew. I'm telling you guys straight up that Saturday stream is a selfish sew. I want those. And I was like, oh, I should just sew these on my own time. They've seen me sew these a few times. But then I was like, no, you know what? I, I don't need other things right now. I need those. And um, I'm just going to do them straight up, you know. And I'm going to call it a speed run. Like in gaming, they do speed runs of games. So that's what I'm going to do. And it'll be fun. 
and um, I'm looking forward to it. So I'll see you Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, find me on Instagram for any photos or schedule changes. Um, and uh, my website is now soso.live, and it will slowly change over to completely be so so live. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you so much. And um, I'm Sarah Me Duffy. And this is So So Live, and I will see you on Saturday where we make the speed run ginger jeans. So take care, guys.